Blingo, blango, presto, changeo. It's Mind Pump time. The best fitness podcast in the world. Did you guys know we're entertainment as well? You already know that now, right? You're watching. You're super entertained. Anyway, here's the giveaway. A lucky viewer can get access to our private forum for free. Here's how you enter to get that, right? Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode to help us with the YouTube algorithm. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we like your comment, if we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the Mind Pump private forum. One more thing before we start this awesome show, and yes, it is super awesome. Two workout programs are on sale right now, both 50% off, MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension. So they're both half off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50. That's SEPTEMBER50 with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Dude, I was uh, on Facebook and I follow like some fitness pages and stuff. And one of them shared a fitness tip from Frank Zane. You guys remember Frank Zane? Of course. So Frank Zane, Justin has no idea. I mean, yeah, he's a guy. One right? of my he's favorite a bodybuilder physiques. guy. Yeah. No, I know who he is. Yeah, he was three time, I think three time Mr. Olympia considered to be like the pinnacle of aesthetics. Yeah, I was going to say, right? didn't they call him like Mr. Aesthetics? That was like they his They did, because when he competed, just a little backstory, right? He competed right around the same time Arnold did, and then he competed uh, in the 80s when Arnold kind of went into acting, and he had a very different kind of physique, right? Arnold at the time was considered a mass monster, one of the biggest bodybuilders anyone had ever seen at that time, and Frank Zane was significantly smaller, like a lot smaller, but he was very well-defined, very well balanced, had this really good posing routine. And so it was like this mass versus, you know, class or whatever type, you know, competition that, you know, still in bodybuilding to this day, you still kind of see that. Um, so great physique, a lot of stuff. But anyway, he's 79 years old. And in the video, he's showing some exercises. He looks very healthy, very fit. And it just reminds me of the how much more valuable. Uh, fitness is when you're older than it is sure. when you're younger. It's sure. so valuable. It's insane. I want to see what he looks like right now. Doug, can you pull it up? I want to, I haven't yeah, seen no. I haven't seen a picture or an image and of it, him. And I wonder too, because like you said, he's not he wasn't quite as extreme on the mass side of it if mm -hmm. that helped him, you know, in terms of a longevity sure. approach with it. He probably now in those days the guys didn't use a lot of anabolic steroids yeah. to begin with. Uh they used a fraction of what guys would use now. Um so I'm sure that you know, kind of played a role. And, and again, consider he's almost 80 years old when you look at this he video. Had the, he had the body type that like made me feel like, okay, I could I could get into competing a yeah. little bit. Like that, his, because his physique looked more realistic and obtainable for a body type like mine. Yeah. You know, what's funny too, to, if he in his pinnacle peak stepped on a physique competition stage today at the pro level, he'd probably be too small. So that right there is when he was in his early seventies. Is that or him to the right? 60s. No, that that's 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 those are little older pictures. So I believe there at the top he was like sixty nine or seventy. But if you pull up like a current picture of him, he's he's uh, like I, mean, I said, Jesus 70, said seventy. Jesus said seventy. Looked amazing. Incredible. The guy looked incredible. I mean, and you, and you can find like classic pictures of him and you know posing when he was in his peak. And he uh, just is that him with his shirt on right there, eighteen to seventy five. Yeah, that's seventy five. So the one I saw was uh, seventy nine. Um, but, you know, if you think of like your typical 79 year old person or someone who's 80, mm -hmm. like I've, I've trained a lot of people in their 70s, a few people in their 80s, you know, the life expectancy is under 80. And think of the average 80 year old, the average 80 year old is on like five to 10 medications. Yeah. yeah. Is not as a walker or some kind of support. Yes, is not. I mean, that's him. There you go, right there. Look at look at him at seventy nine. Yeah, I mean, incredible, right? Yeah, it looks healthy. Yeah, yeah and the, he looks he looks better, and he's more mobile than probably the average, you know, sixty year old or fifty something year old at seventy nine years old. Oh, he's got an Instagram. Yeah, he does. Cool. I was just on his Instagram looking at. He has this bicep exercise that he's uh, kind of. You know, he used they used to call him the chemist. Because back in the day, he was one of the first bodybuilders that was into like specific supplements and amino acids and uh, and stuff like that. So smart guy too, um, apparently. But yeah, I mean, when you find somebody at that age group who's fit and healthy, it's it's like they're in a different. It's not even the same universe uh, of, of in terms of lifestyle and quality of life yeah i think there's something to it though even with like the whole like hypertrophy approach and kind of bodybuilder style like of training in terms of the longevity yeah. with, with that versus like the power lifting like you're right you don't really see a whole lot of um 
you know, champions, like like 80-year-old powerlifters, like, doing well with their joints. No, that's true. I think because of the extreme nature of, of <clears throat> constantly pushing the envelope, your your risk of injury is so much higher, whereas bodybuilding, you know, it's focused on aesthetics, but the training focus is on, like, feel. I mean, like, uh, Dexter Jackson, right? He just retired at, I don't know, 50-something years old. Looks he was amazing. competing on the pro stage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's really incredible because when you're around, you know, there were a couple. I had a I had a client who was 82 years old. This little little lady, I loved her. She was a Spitfire, and she's the one that I I would tell you guys. She would tell me stories about the the what do they call them retirement homes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she would tell me all the crazy escapades that. Which by the way, oh uh, yeah, wild. Right. Like it's hilarious. <laughs> The, the, yeah. the shit that would There's go down. There's a couple funny movies that are built around that. Oh, dude, yeah. she would tell yeah, me they're sto- getting down. They're yeah. they're getting down, and if you're a man in one of those house those places, yeah, you're a stud because ev- most everybody's a woman because all the guys are dead, right? So <laughs> yeah, so if you can hold on, yeah, 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 you're gonna do well. Yeah, in fact, there was this one guy. She she kept telling me he was she called she kept calling him the 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 stud. Oh, he's the stud of the house or whatever. <laughs> and I, I remember I went there because I did a, a fitness talk. Cause she, she Just said, Hey, can you come Viagra everywhere? Oh yeah. She goes, can you come talk to, you know, everybody about, you know, basic exercises that we can do on our own? And I said, Oh yeah, I would love to. And then she pointed him out and he was this old guy with a cane, you know, and he, he you could tell he tried to dress cool or whatever. And I'm like, that guy is getting all the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so incredible. He's got his but, pimp cane. But you know, when you're in there and the, you see these people at this age, you're, you're much more likely to need someone to take care of you. You're much more likely to not be independent. Like you can't have, it's like you can't live on your own. You can't do things for yourself. And th- and there's either that or you got a guy like Frank Zane who not only can take care of himself, he's fit and healthy enough to take care of other people because of what he's done uh, yeah. for himself. So, Well, speaking of smart buff guys, I am actually really excited because we've been working on this for a while now, but we're getting ready to do a collaboration with our good friend, Jordan Shallow. Yeah. Beast. So that's, uh, it's been so cool to watch. I mean, I don't remember what year uh, when we first brought Jordan on on the podcast, but I'm pretty sure he was just turning on his social media. I think uh, he was a, a friend of Craig Caperso's, who's a mm-hmm. friend of mine or ours. And he introduced us and we hit it off instantly and we've watched him continue to grow. And that was back when he was at uh, Stanford, right? So he yeah, was doing, yep. he was working at Stanford. So to watch his evolution and to see where he's at and everything like that, starting to work with pro athletes oh, and he's doing He all- introduced me to Corey Schlesinger and Max Schmarza. That's right. And yeah. So he got me in that whole like uh, world-class strength world, which was awesome. But mm-hmm. yeah, he's just a wealth of information. One of, one of the st- smartest uh power lifters that i know I if mean, not the yeah exactly he's yeah. got that rare quality of where you could hang out with him and he's like your buddy and you'll joke around like one and then when it gets technical yeah all of a sudden you're listening to you're listening to like a dissertation uh, yeah like, like a, a textbook yeah he's yeah. also you know it's obvious how you do anything is how you do everything right so he's extremely professional um katrina and this is not to throw anybody else under the bus but you know we work with a lot of companies right we have a lot of partners and sponsors and and relationships that we've built and uh katrina manages a lot of that stuff on the back end and supports me with that and you know i when we first started doing business with him she was like oh my god you have no idea how refreshing it is to work with someone with this level of professionalism. So he's organized. Oh, so organized. He's got systems in place. Like I can't wait to get his book over to us. And so we're going to do something in collaboration with his certification, which is amazing from everybody. I know that's been through it. Uh, And we're going to do something for our listeners that also go through his certification to a way to give back to you guys on our part to combine with that. So that's all happening. And so yeah, happy that it finally rad. is. Yeah, what's cool about that is, um, you know, he's he's a fitness influencer, and this is the this is the rare combination. It's like you either have influence in social media, and your you know fitness entertainment, or you're an idiot, or you're really smart, and you're giving good information, and you're really you have a small influence, and the only people kind of listening to you are academics. And maybe other people who are super fitness fanatics. So it's it's rare to get somebody who can do both, right? Who has a large re- you know reach. He's an influencer, but he's also giving really good information. Really smart guy. He's doing the right stuff. And the more we can lift people up like that, the more we'll be able to outcompete the fitness entertainment 
morons that are doing so much to ruin, um, you know, the fitness and health space. Yeah. yeah. So that's what gets me, you know, excited about about that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, me too. Yeah. So oh. anyway, Justin, I saw you take all the boxes of Magic Spoon again. Yeah, dude. Just want to call you out on the <laughs> show. I'm here. so excited. The new flavors. They, yeah, they finally sent us all the new jams. Like I brought it home and. Um, it's funny because Everett, my youngest, he loves like Apple Jacks and all that. And like it, the only time we were allowed, you know, we, we allot that to them is when we go camping or something. You know, oh, it's yeah. like it's almost like the, you know, the the sugar cereal thing because we're camping. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. uh, it, I anyway, I brought the home. I'm like, look, you know, they have like an apple cinnamon flavor and he lost it. It is so pumped on it. He loves it. So, yeah, it was. That's why you took them that, off. Yeah, that was. I, I, I saw that right away and I grabbed that one. I know they have like. Pumpkin a, chai is the other one. Yeah, the pumpkin chai one, which yeah. I haven't tried that one yet. But I, yeah, I, I didn't mind it. It wasn't my favorite one, but uh, I mean, he absolutely loved it. So it, it's cool. They, they keep like trying out these you're other the, flavors. You're the peanut butter, right? That's the yeah. one that your favorite. I like peanut butter, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, nothing I'll, beats I'll that with nothing chocolate. Beats free. I took them both home and I actually had them both already. So I. I had, I had one yesterday uh, for dinner, and then I had the other one for breakfast. And, uh, I, you know, I still – blueberry with bananas, fresh bananas in it, amazing. And and then fruity, I still think – and I haven't had one that I don't like. Like, I don't I think there's any of them that are like, oh, this is gross, or I don't like it at all. Uh, but the fruity to me is the, to the closest to tasting like fruity pebbles or fruit loops, like anything out there like that. They, they haven't, yeah. they, the rest of them, I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of like that or, oh, it's, but those are like, I have, have you seen people posting like their obsession with, oh, with yeah. magic spoon? Yeah, like yeah. you just see, like, I've seen like 20 something boxes laid out of all the different flavors and everything. And people are like, oh no, look what you guys have created. Of all of our partners, that is the one that even like my my family members that don't work out like, and I think they do because they feel like, oh, I'm getting something healthy, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and they love it. It's you know? whey so, protein. Yeah. It's of all it's of like our partnerships into healthier things. It's the right? one that is most consistent in my family. That like everybody mm-hmm. like once they've tried that, they're like, oh, this is money, dude. Go-to. I forgot about fruity pebbles when you said that. I really oh, that I remember the rainbow milk afterwards. Yeah, you'd eat uh, it yeah. and there'd be rainbow milk left over. Yeah. in the bowl. That's one of my favorite cereals. That's why. Yeah, yeah, and I. I think it's uh, it tastes the closest to those i think than any other uh, any of the other flavors that they have i mean they're all good but yeah i wasn't really I, the pumpkin chai i had last night and i was like man eh, it's not really my thing mm-hmm. I, I didn't like that and i in the apple the apple cinnamon was good uh i was never an apple jacks fan though yeah so if i guess if you weren't like if i that wasn't apple like, jacks was good with apple jacks yeah my favorite all time though and i don't they, they haven't really quite you know tried to emulate this yet but it was the cinnamon toast crunch like that was the ultimate Bro, sugar cereal. Diabetes in a box. <laughs> it was yeah. like so bad for you, but it was so damn that's, good. That's the one time that I would eat a bowl of cereal and I'd be like, oh man, I don't know if I can do it. It would hit my- I'm like way too hyped. You know, like, you know what'd be interesting <laughs> to hear crash. from them is I would love to hear their reasoning behind like why certain cereals are harder to to create or emulate, right? Like, mm-hmm. like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Like I wonder if there's like a, a formula in there that's like- it's so hard because they put this much yeah. sugar in there or something like that. It like, tastes like, the, like literally it's caked with like sugar crystals, yeah. you know? So. And why is fruity so spot on? Like fruity, I feel like they nailed, like it tastes. I know. Yeah, you could almost do a blind test with somebody that. and they'd have a hard time telling if it's like the sugar full field. Now, soup. what I want to know is I want to know the science and technology that went into Captain Crunch. Because the oh. whole selling point behind it was that it, it destroys your roof. the roof of your yeah, mouth. Is what that does. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. The, 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 the whole selling Razor point blades. was it doesn't go soggy in milk. And it's true. It does go soggy, but it takes way longer. You can leave it in the milk way longer than other cereals. Yeah. But whatever I mean, they that did, is a factor. Yeah. That, bits of concrete That's in there. probably why you it would shred your face. Because whatever they did to it to make it last in milk also... Yeah. Tears your mouth up. Yeah, like eating steel wool. <laughs> Lucky Charms was just lazy. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's you have like a two minute window to eat that. Yeah, dude. and then it's soggy as fuck. Yeah, then it's yeah. really <laughs> soggy. And it's just little marshmallows. It all tastes the same. <laughs> you just, this you is know, the you just took me ever. back to a memory when we when I was uh, I was still a teenager at home, and so my little brother and sister were I don't see how old they'd be, a couple of years, three, four years old, or somewhere around that range. And I just remember getting Lucky Charms. I remember getting up for high school and pouring a bottle 
of Lucky or a bowl of Lucky Charms and no fucking marshmallows being in there oh, because my little brother and sister would go in there yes. and they would just eat the marshmallows. Out of the my pot. brothers did the same thing. I'm oh, so mad at him. Oh my god, that's <laughs> infuriating. I know. I just that memory just came to me when Justin brought that up right now. I thought, oh my god, I remember being so pissed. Like you know, you're getting ready and you, you love Lucky Charms, and in my house with that many kids, it's like you get Dude. maybe one bowl per box. That's like evil. I yeah. pour it in and it's like no marshmallows. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, for whatever reason, grape nuts looked good on the commercial. Oh, I'm like, dude. that looks really good. And my my mom's grandpa like, used to love those. And my mom's like, you're not going to like it. And I'm like, yes, I am. We got this huge argument. And my mom goes, I'll buy you a box, but you're going to have to eat the whole thing. And I'm not going to buy you any other cereal until you finish it. I'm like, okay, mom. She buys grape nuts, which is essentially... <clears throat> what is it? It's like it's just like like horse feed or something. It's yeah. like barley, dried yeah. barley bits yeah. or something like that, and it literally tastes like that. And Shredded I remember wheat was <clears throat> not much of a step up either. Yes, and I remember I poured a bowl of it. It's literally the densest fucking cereal of all time. I poured a bowl, filled it with milk. I got like a quarter of the way through, and I was like, oh. it's like, but I don't want to like rabbit it. feed. You yeah, know, and I had to keep fed animals? eating it, and it never went down. I remember I keep taking a scoop out, like it's still there. Uh, and my mom's like, "You're gonna finish this bowl of cereal." <laughs> it's just there. He is whole grain wheat, wheat flour, malted barley flour. I mean, yeah. it's just it's it's gluten, bomb. canola oil, yeah. too. dude. It's, it's just a bomb of, of like whole wheat bits, and it's dense. I loved shit. that cereal. Did you? Oh, I course, loved it. it. <laughs> really? Like, the poop yes. was amazing. Yeah. After what'd you put in it? Sugar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tons of sugar. Hey, <laughs> hey, so we get to do shredded wheat too, dude. Have remember? some grape nuts with your sugar. It's like it's exactly, a bale of hay that you're putting in your mouth. Oh, yeah, I, I, I love the crunch. crunch. Yeah. Yes. The yeah, crunch is so good, good. It did have a good crunch. Doug, what are the macros on that? Because it was so dense, I wouldn't be surprised if a bowl of it would be like, 150 grams of oh, carbs. Totally. Yeah. Pull it. Pull well, that. You know up. how Obviously. they do it. They put. They cut it in like a, the serving size will be like a half a cup or something like that. Yeah, lunch. I don't know. Doug, Doug's having cup. trouble with the internet again. <laughs> yeah, <it's good. laughs> I don't know why. Why we have a couple viruses here. since our last searches? <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. Well, there's 34 grams of carbs in a what? How big of a serving? Yeah. Well, it says one cup, but I don't believe that. No there's only way. 150 calories, and that can't be right. That's that's because uh, it's super dense and high calorie. Dude, they get away with all yeah. kinds of. Yo, why we're talking about super healthy food? here did you see uh taco bell with their um their two-story uh drive-through four drive-through thing coming through wait what yeah they're Explain like the first, okay so they're i mean it's idea just to, so they could they can bust more people through so they they built the restaurant on the second floor and then like yeah i get those banks where you drive multiple lanes oh. so they can do they can serve multiple lanes pull up i'm sorry doug i know we're bouncing you around here you're just fi finally figuring this out and now i'm going to send you over so to you Taco get your Bell. food in like a vacuum chute or something yeah i i, I was reading this oh, like article the old bank <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they serve it technically like that, but it looks like that. Pull up Taco Bell two story drive through, and you'll see what it looks like. So, so does that mean like there's that there's like different levels of cars getting food? No, or? it looks like the cars are on one level, and then the restaurants above it. So mm. it's like so it's just driving under footprint. it. Yeah, you'll see it in just a second when Doug pulls it up here. Yeah, Taco Bell is oh, that's the one fast food I think I haven't had in the long time. Fastest drive through that was rated, right? So if you rate how many all, bean burritos have you eaten in your life? In my life, yeah. oh god, there's a picture a of it if you just scroll down. There. I think a million. Down. Yeah, I mean, I've had so many bean burritos. Yes. Yeah, oh, there it is. I couldn't right even there. touch See it. These oh days. wow, look at that. It looks oh, cool. Hey, you know what it looks like? What was that movie with Sylvester Stallone where he goes with uh, Wesley Snipes? Oh yeah, yeah, Demolition Man. Okay, it look, remember how Taco Bell was like a fancy restaurant yeah, in the yeah. future? They made it look like that. It actually does look like. <laughs> it looks like the Taco Bell and Demolition Man. It's well. pretty. I can't, is it four lanes? Is that, is that? I can't tell from here. It looks like four lanes. Two on two on each side, huh? Wow. Okay. Taco Bell is, they were the first ones to capitalize on stoners, I feel yeah. like. No, 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 that was Jack no, in the Box. Jack in the Box. Was, it really? the Box totally was the first Jack one to open up all night. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But now Taco Bell, I mean, let's Well, they all do now. Like, yeah. I think almost every, uh, right? Almost every fast food is, uh, I don't know why I look at Justin they took like a he pay. should know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. you're, <laughs> you're the, you're the, you know, right, Justin? You eat like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just, you. like, looked yeah. at him, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, right, Justin? It's 24 I, I, hours on all those. Hey, I mean, did you guys Did you guys ever do something about Taco Bell where you could just eat a ton of it? Did you guys ever do that with your friends where you went in there and you just order, like, I'll have 15 tacos and seven bean burritos. And let's just see who can eat the most. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, the, no, we were tiny. Kids. You can eat about a million of those. Stupid what do you mean tacos? you broke? That's yeah. like it's literally what I yeah, just said. Like a dollar $3. each. It's yeah, like, I know. Stupid. But I mean, like you, when I was a kid, like we went to McDonald's on the twenty-nine cent hamburger and thirty-nine cent cheeseburger day, and you you ate what you could afford—the three or four dollars that was in your 
you yeah. know, inside your uh, little ashtray or whatever. You know, I would do that when uh, I was bulking. When I was broke, I'd go to Taco Bell for sure. No, no, when I was bulking, this is back when I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I was like, oh, cheeseburger, and it's 99 cents. I'll eat seven of them, and that's going to be all kinds of protein. And mm-hmm. that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah. Not realizing it's mostly bread. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's all bread. That was I haven't had that in a long time. It's been. A long, I'm trying to think of like the the last time I had any of these. The Taco Bell has been a really long time because I do remember – the last time that I diarrhea, did it, yeah, yeah, it just tore my. And I, all I could think about was like, man, as a kid, I used to eat this like daily. Like, how did this not tear me up back then? It, or was I that was that oblivious? oblivious yeah. I think it's long term effects. Was. Now you have the diarrhea, you know, <laughs> yeah. from back when you were, you know, when you were a kid. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, of, well, go ahead, Doug. Oh yeah, the grape nuts. Uh, Nutrition facts are here. A half cup of that stuff is 200 calories. That's more like it. And 47 grams of carbs. In a half yeah. cup. In a half, half cup, cup, which is nothing. Very dense. Dude, you eat, I, yeah, I swear dude. to God, I, you eat a bowl of that and you you go take a nap for a couple days. Well, do the math. Okay, so a normal like bowl, if you guys like a normal, like not crazy oversized. It's like two cups. Three. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's closer to like three cups of cereal inside like a normal bowl that you would get. So do, 300 grams of carbs. Yeah. Twelve hundred wow. calories. Yeah, uh, if you yeah, were to if you were to fill like a normal, and that's a normal bowl, not a big like I eat have a big old bowl of normally like the magic spoon stuff. So a punch yeah, bowl, you would yeah, yeah. It's, it looks kind of like that <laughs> yeah. actually. You, you know you, you hold the spoon. You know, it's de- no, it's designed for, and we bought them like for. I think I have like eight of them because Katrina's like she got so tired of like me having to constantly keep going back to fill the little ones up. So they're like serving bowls that I use yeah. for <laughs> like the Tupperware yeah. ones. Yeah. It's yeah. not Tupperware, but it's like <laughs> but like that. You know what you would put on like if you had like mashed potatoes. Potatoes you were serving yeah, uh, yeah. on the dinner table. But that's you, what you eat cereal yeah. at. <laughs> the chip bowl. Yeah, we were over my my parents' house, and my mom, she's she's so old school that if something is still good, she just won't throw it away. Like, so let me explain. So I went I went over there the other day, and I was looking for a bowl to to feed the baby with, and I opened the the cabinet where I remember all the bowls are, and I see the cereal bowls that we used to eat out of when I was a kid. Like they're like Ninja Turtle bowls and like <laughs> you know like Ducktales, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, Mom, I'm like, I ate out of this bowl. Why is it still here? It's still good. It still oh, yeah. works. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, my mom still has those commemorative, like, Star Wars ones you get from, like, uh, you know, one of those uh, fast food, like, oh, Burger King. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, like, yeah. So oh, my God. My parents that. used to keep the cups like that. Like, yeah. when McDonald's would do, like, a collaboration with one of those, and then we use those, like, forever as drinking yeah. cups. Knowing what house. we know yep. about xenoestrogens now, I wonder how much of that shit is released chemicals yeah, yeah, into us. Wash it to your dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, so dude. Just all in, released. Yeah. Oh, hey, s- hey, so you guys want to hear... Like some crazy, I read this crazy medical story that uh, I had, I couldn't believe. And I, I, I looked it up in other places. It's a real thing. So here's what happened. This is like the headline of the story. A man went to the doctor because he kept ejaculating out of his butthole. That's not real. Okay. Yeah, yes, it is, dude. That's not real. Yes, it is. I have left the building. No, yeah. no this is real. <laughs> So I looked it up and I read it and he went and got tested and they found semen and urine in his through that kept coming out of his anus. <laughs> It's because his boyfriend. Because somebody put it up there. there. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's not because <laughs> it's not because he's somebody pumped ejected. him full of <laughs> yeah. fluid. Whoa, like come I can't come on, figure man. this out. How is yeah. this happening? Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Here's what happened. Like... Here's what happened. Year, uh, years ago, he went to the hospital. So I, I read the same thing and I'm like, what? How is that even, like, what the hell is going on here? It's got to be the weirdest thing ever. No, what happened was he got treated at one point for, I don't remember what it was, uh, a drug overdose or something. And so they had to give him, they had to do something where they... Were, Re- rewind. They, they crossed yeah, the plumbing? Could, yeah, could they, uh, hook the plumbing to the roof. <laughs> no. So you know how they use a catheter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how they'll, they'll do a catheter? And Okay, so they did all these procedures because he was out yeah. so that he could, you know, relieve himself. I just picture, like, this young doctor in there, first time ever, and he's like, oh, I think it's the green one with the red yeah, one. Yeah, right. Ah, oh, fuck, just do it this cross way. The, yeah. Cross the Oh, man. <laughs> well, what happened was they, they must have injured him and not realized it, and they produced a fistula. In his anus, and somehow it went and connected to the part. The Whoa, what's that a goes, fistula? Yeah, what? you get a fist in your anus. <laughs> no, it's not good. <laughs> wow, I knew this wrong... was going to devolve. I know Doug, Doug was so excited to get to this. When Doug looked over the notes. He goes, yeah. "Why does it say yeah. butt stuff?" I know on butt the stuff notes with right Sal. Now. So yeah. no, no, keep no, no. going. It's, so it's fascinating. A fistula would be like, um, like it's like a uh, like an injury that becomes pus filled and kind of infected, and it can grow. And what happened was, is it came into the the plumbing that goes to his urethra or his you know his penis or whatever, 
and he didn't know this. And so then it healed, but then things would leak through. Wow. And so they figured out what, because at first the doctors were baffled. How the hell is this happening? Then through, you know, testing and stuff, they figured this out and they were able to fix it. And he's a completely fine now. But it was written in articles because how crazy. So it wasn't uh, actually semen, it was pus. Is that no, what you're no, 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 no. Okay. Think of like the plumbing that goes to your butt. Think of the plumbing it's, that it's goes weird. to your butt. It's weird. I got sick all of a sudden. Okay. It you could literally, if there's if if there's damage, you can get the two connected. And so things can move in the wrong direction. Luckily, he wasn't pooping out of his if his penis. Luckily it was the other way around, because that would have been weird. But that's, that's oh, that would have been weird. Yeah. That's is that all <laughs> really possible? Uh, yes. That's what happened. <laughs> It has wow. to be oh, the first time ever in history. Have we ever had somebody do this okay, before? Okay, so here's the, th by the way, this is in futurism.com. Yeah. So sorry, Doug. How conflicted are you too? And you got to take a dump. The, like, ah, yeah, well, yeah. No, I don't think. Awesome. No, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. you see, always when you're I on porn. Tell anybody, always when you're on porn awesome. too, for some weird reason. <laughs> yeah. So this was in futurism.com. Sometimes they've got some good articles. The title of it was, and this, this is funny because it's like a science, you know, article. Yeah. And the, t the title is, Doctors intrigued by man who jizzed out of his butthole. So anyway, this was th this was that's what happened. <laughs> so they found so ready for this. This so they called it rec uh, recto urethral fistula, an extremely rare condition in which there's a new anatomical connection between the urethra and the rectum. And this was caused by that procedure that he had. Dude. And sometimes that can happen with abdominal surgeries, rectal manipulation and penetration, or rectal trauma. I feel like this is one of your Skeletor fun facts. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. you like that's those? That's become my favorite meme. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. You guys like that? Uncomfortable facts. All right, yeah. since we're uncomfortable. The more you know. Yeah. Since we're already uncomfortable and we're gonna, we're just going to stay on oh, this just for a second. Just keep going. Here's another one uh, because, uh, you know, I looked this up and then other stuff came up too and I thought, this is all goes Typical you, right? You read this and then you go down the <laughs> rabbit hole. I love it, dude. I mean, you find the most random. I You out-random me, dude. I've never met anybody who can out-random me. Bro, I'm yeah. so random. It's all great. Right, listen to this, right? So this this is a, another article and this is in IFL Science. They, they often have cool stuff in there too. Yeah. A 15-year-old boy was hospitalized after inserting a USB cable into his penis in a highly dangerous attempt to measure its length, according to a new case report. In? <laughs> what? Yeah. Why, now, why here's, go in? Here, he put it in there, apparently. Yeah. Now, here's what I think. I don't think he was trying to measure his penis. I thought he was getting weird with himself, and he, yeah. tried, and he came up with a really good excuse. Yeah. Nonetheless, that's 100%. what happened. The two distal ports of the USB wire were found to be protruding from the external urethral medius. Medius. I don't even know if that's a thing. Medius. Yeah, I mean, it's got a square end to it, too. Yeah, whilst I mean, why? The, the middle part of the knotted wire remained within the urethra. He was otherwise fit and healthy adolescent with no history of mental health disorders. So he got, and they, they actually have an x ray of the, the cable in his junk. He was just trying to get connected. Dude, what? <laughs> you know, he's all, hey, he's all, can I charge this? <laughs> Plug it in. <laughs> I'm receiving radio waves. Let me see if I can download some information oh to God. myself. What the hell, dude? Oh, People are weird. Yeah, you know yeah, what, dude? What. Why is it nine out of ten times it's a guy? It's never a, like a, it's always a guy. That Guys are way shit. more weird. Yeah. Way more weird. Yeah, they'll weird. do crazy shit. Well, speaking of, of cable wires, you like this transition right here? <laughs> Comcast. Okay. Wow. I, I should get extra points probably for that transition out USB of that right cable. there. So. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I trapped you. I'm going like, oh, what have I read lately? I could get us out of this, yeah, Doug. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. So, Comcast is making TVs now. So did you know that? Which I think is really, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought that was an uh, an interesting read. That uh, I mean, you're seeing more and more businesses doing this, right? Where they're they're. Uh, their ecosystem, right? Uh, Apple, I think, is the the most notorious for right, you know, bringing everybody in house and then yeah. selling you everything that's yeah. connected or related to their products or whatever. Yeah, because so. isn't Apple going to make a, a, a car at one point? Yeah, Didn't they no, say they're still. Do that? I think it's still it. on there. Yeah, it's still on the horizon. <clears throat> but I don't know when this was supposed to launch. Maybe Doug, you could help me out because I did. I did just briefly read the article, and it was the only thing I could think of that could transition transition us out of a wire and a penis. Wow. Uh, conversations. So. You know, it's yeah. funny. I was, I was, uh, I was watching TV with Jessica the other night, and um, you know, we were, we were talking about TVs and stuff. And I said, you know, honey, these are essentially TVs are just computers now. Yeah. They they used to just broadcast signals, but now it's literally just a computer with apps, and they go on the internet, and then you can download apps, and that's all it is. It's literally a you know whatever a weak computer on a nice TV screen and you can put it anywhere you want in your house, plug it in and... And with streaming, you don't need any... It's so cool. Nothing. You don't need any wires I don't know, or I, I, I bought a... Um, God, it was like a 42-inch, I want to say. 40, 42 
two hundred and something bucks. I wanted Isn't something that crazy. Yeah, I wanted something that I could uh, put on the 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 counter when I'm uh, in the bath. So I wanted to be able to it'd be in the. Oh bath. my god, oh, bro! I did yeah. the same thing. Did you really? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. The, the new place. You watch we, your soap opera. The, the new place we soaking. moved into has uh, like a Roman tub. Yeah. And there's like a like a, a wall in front of it. Yeah. And I'm like. This would be perfect place for a TV. And, yeah. and Jessica's like, I don't want it. What, what I, I said, trust me. I know. Katrina does, is not a fan of And you I, know what? Yeah. She loves it now. Oh, yeah. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. You sit in the tub and you put on your. Yeah. Yeah. You put on your. But I mean, your, it's so cool show. that. I mean, it's a 40 inch, which is a good. Which, by the way, it's just crazy. When I was a kid, 36 inch tube was the biggest and it was in the big wood thing. And it, it was a thousand pounds. More money yeah. than you could afford. Huge yeah. piece of furniture. But now, I mean, this thing is, it's so lightweight that I just, when I'm dunting the bath, I put it in my closet and it's all it needs is the plug in wire. I've downloaded all my apps to stream. Yeah, can cast anything from my phone or whatever, and it's a. You do like to take baths. Yeah, I'm a big bath. Guy. How often do you take baths? Honestly, yeah, you can tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My opinion, it's like, gonna be revealing here. Probably four or five times a week. Wow. Yeah, Dude. on the minimum, sometimes every wow, day. Wow, that is. Well, a lot. Yeah, also. I, well, one, uh, we have those. We have like bathtubs that fit. bubbles or no bubbles. We do have. Uh, I have salts and um, and candles. No, no candles. You don't like candles. If I'm by myself, mm. no candles. Katrina's coming in of candles. Epsom salt. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Epsom salt. Thank you. That's yeah, what, yeah. So we have the Epsom salt stuff, and then the the. So how much salt do you add? Because I started using Epsom salts too, and it's we have like a jar, like eight. That's what we do. Eight, like yeah, you have a setup like we do, like eight uh, tablespoons or so. Of, oh, use tablespoons. We have well, a big wooden scooper. Yeah, we have like. Like a little plastic scooper that she just keeps in there, and I and it's throwing. I'd say probably eight or so. I'd throw. Do in you there. notice a difference? Uh, on in what? Epsom salt versus no salt. Mm. Oh yeah, like it pulls all the water. Like if I have like if I'm like bloated and stuff like that, that's what it'll it'll help out with God, that. Bro, Plus, I love you're the, cracking me up yeah, right now. You dude, take baths and I'm yeah, bloated. Do you do yeah. cu- cucumbers <laughs> on the eyes? And, <laughs> yeah. uh, I do. I do like baths, man. And Dang. I also what I was getting to was that my son and I. So I bathe with Max still, right? So you know I could probably only do that for a, a little while until it's weird, right? So yeah. <laughs> right now it's you're not. You're there with your 13 year old son. What are you guys doing? Uh, yeah, I take baths. School is 16, right? Slap water on it, right? So, so long as it's normal, I think it's. I'm taking. I take advantage of it. He loves to get in the bath, and the thing is so big. Like I and I like to come at home when I come home. I like to relax and do that, and so that's like a, yeah. a routine. Oh, it's so. funny actually. This reminds me because uh, I mean, it's well, you know, they're at the age where it's not weird yet. You know, if we're naked or, or whatever, but like we were just in the shower, and like Ethan wakes up, he's like walking in, and then we're in shower, and like he just like was like, oh. oh. Like he, like he caught us or something. I'm like, dude, we're taking a shower. Nothing's happening, you know. I'm like just waiting for the day where something is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Like I explain it, and I'm just like, yikes! Oh no, it was I'm close. Wrestling. Yeah, I know. My kids are old enough. My older kids are old enough now to where, like, you know, you get into it, right? You get into it with your girl, and you lose a little bit of like awareness of maybe how loud you may be or if the bed's banging or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And you're in the moment. The bed's banging. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then afterwards... Oh, I gotta fix my bed. Afterwards, you... you, you, you th- I, like, I think to myself and I go, oh, shit, were we a little bit like, oh, are we loud or whatever? So I'll kind of walk out the hallway and my kids have their music on loud. I'm like, oh, fuck. I, mean, I wonder if they were like, turn up the music. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing some shit. 100%, coming. dude. I remember having to do that. Coming yeah. out. Yeah so, yeah, so we have the bath, too. And I started doing that, too. Not five days a week, though. I do like yeah. maybe once a week here and there. Well, you, so you don't you don't take it with your son at all? No? I uh, we, Once. I did it with him. It's fun, right? It's fun yeah. with the kid. Yeah. But uh, Jessica and I have done it a couple times. But here's the thing. She likes to relax and talk in the bath. If she gets in the bath with me, I'm five minutes in, and I'm like... We're, are we doing this or what? Like, I don't know. Because we're already naked. Water's here. You're on me. Like, I can't do it. I can't just sit there and relax in the tub. <laughs> You're like a 16-year-old boy, Yeah, dude. I know. It's so funny. So she knows now. She'll be like, I'll be like, you want to take a bath together? And she'll look at me like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're not relaxing, right? Yeah. No, we're not. We're not going to be relaxing. No. Anyway. So Comcast, you want to say, Doug, this year, by this year, they'll have TVs? Yeah, let me pull that back. Be interesting up. to see how good they are. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Say, how be, competitive it'll be, dude. Because like Samsung, I love the the frame. I've, mm. I've had two now. This is my second one, and it's just so cool that it like looks literally like a picture frame. It's so thin. Yeah, and you can just display like art on it, and it it, it blends in. You know, uh, it doesn't even look like a TV. It's yeah, really cool. It's, it's wild. Well, yeah. with with them, it, they I mean because they have you know cable and you know obviously like internet like and so I would think they're gonna start 
doing bundling packages. Yeah, like maybe how, buy the TV, get a discount. Yes, yes right? Oh my God. Or, yeah, buy TV, free internet service if so long as you have that, or the other way around, right? Free TV if you sign up for Not a year. Not a bad idea. Of course, especially yeah. with how cheap TVs have become to, to make. What a great way to lock people in. You're kind of on the fence. Oh, should I go through AT&T? Or should, oh, well, Comcast, I get a free 50-inch plasma if I just sign up for a year. Like, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? I'm so not- are they ditching the Xfinity thing? Are they still? Because, like, that was, like, you know, they're going through all this. Uh, uh, rebranding. Rebrand because yeah. the, the Comcast. Like, no, no, it's Xfinity. I know I should say Xfinity because that's what it is, right? Because Xfinity, I, I don't understand, like, uh how the breakdown like which works. Which is which? Yeah, who who owns what or like how what's in what's included what's it in it say, the, Doug? Yeah, so they're working with Walmart and a TV manufacturer, Hisense, not familiar with them, uh, on smart TVs that are supposed to hit retail outlets later this year. Wow. Hmm. That's insane. You know, I was reading an article on uh smart contacts. Have you guys seen the technology that they're smart they're, contacts? Contact lenses. Oh yeah. So these are contact lenses that mm. At night, you plug them in and you charge them. During the day, you put them on. And while you're wearing them, it augments reality. And so the first people that they're going to kind of target with this are people with visual issues. So, like, you could put it on and it'll be able to zoom in on certain things or whatever you're focusing on will come in clear and sharper. Mm -hmm. Or if you have, uh, you know, macular degeneration, it'll... It'll, it'll project the image closer to you so you could see the edges in front of you. And then, of course, you're going to be able to, for the average consumer, it'll be able to pull up internet searches and superimpose things on top of things in front dude, of you. So, how so, crazy is our world going to get? Bro, well, you in, know what comes to mind? Years, it's fucking with, weird, with dude. With stuff like that? What I think about right away when stuff like this comes out, like my brain automatically goes to like, like this whole biohacking and being able to like, you know, make your eyes digital and be able to manipulate with augmented reality. What I think to, right away is like hackers. Like yeah, how fucked up is that? If someone hacks your contact lenses and you wake up and like a scary monster is like a, <laughs> is running straight at you. You know what? Weird yeah. shit like that, dude. Imagine how oh, yeah. imagine how easily you'll be able to manipulate people. That's what I'm into saying. Like alien invasion. Everybody sees, but it's nothing. It's right. all in your contact. That's why. That's where my brain goes right away. We start. We start getting more connected with you know the web and digital stuff like that. You know, well, like well, think now. Now let's move into the like the cool like good side, right? Imagine technology in your contact lenses that'll be able to pick up um, weapons. Oh, there's a guy. He's got a gun over there, or. You know, crime was just committed. It'll show you what's going on. Or or even this, you go to a restaurant and immediately when you look at the sign, just like they have, what are, they, what are those QR codes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You look at the sign and it'll give you the rating on, you know, Facebook. The ra- You know, here's people that you know that have gone there and what they said about it. And you'll just be able to look at the place well, and get that. I remember reading about the Internet of Things. You guys are familiar with that? It's It was a whole movement, like, I don't know if it was in the 90s or whenever, like, the Internet started, like, people started to try to catalog, like, everything possible, like, in the world, define it and all that stuff. And so it, they've just been this digital catalog that they keep, you know, building upon. And, and so eventually – it was going to feed into something like this, right? So if you're looking around, you know, basically everything has uh, a definition and, you know, based off of like uh, shape recognition or whatever, geolocation, all that kind of stuff. Like they have it to that, that, that specific, like that amount of data is going to be possible. It's crazy. It's like, it's mind blowing, but that this has been like years and years of uh, people just contributing to it. That's wild. Now think of law enforcement. Imagine law enforcement having these contacts and the contacts being able to pick up slight nuances in pulse, body temperature. They already have predictive software that can pinpoint all the trends of crime. So yes. they've, they've been, they've shown that in a few, I remember, I think it was in like uh, Minneapolis or, or somewhere in the Midwest that they, they had like a lot of success with that. Do you, and you know what, you know, what's funny. They, they shut that down oftentimes because yeah. it goes to certain areas and then people say it's discriminatory. Like, like you're targeting. Yeah. Like yes. lower income. Even though it's really effective uh, from a crime perspective, it comes across as discriminatory. So there's definitely, Right. Oh, yeah. Let's well, not try and save lives because we might hurt feelings. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, makes that's a lot of, makes a lot of fucking y- sense. You know, that's an issue. You yeah. know, what's going to be interesting is when, um, you know, I don't. This is not. I don't know if this will ever happen in our lifetime. But when law enforcement is no longer people, and it's just AI machines that are 
objective. They're totally objective. Um, Worst case scenario, dude. That's for sure. That's uh, Terminator. Oh, uh, you know, that's, it won't go there first, though. Do you think? I think we'll have your, dude, your you need dishwashing the human, robots and shit first before yes, that happens. Because you can still get through to a human. Yeah. You know, like the robot thing is that scares the shit out of me. Yeah, it does totally. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna take a, a little bit of a, a left turn here. I kind of again went down another rabbit hole of uh, exercises effects on uh, mental and psychological health. Uh, you know, we were we were, and I don't want to give away too much, but we were talking to um, another company, and they wanted us to to sure you could say that. maybe do deal. so. Yeah, it was bodybuilding.com, and yeah. they wanted us to to do some content for them on exercise and anxiety and depression. So yesterday I was like, you know what, let me look up some of the current studies on um, exercise and depression and just the mental and psychological effects. And it, you know, it really does blow me away how, you know, people by now, people are very aware of the physiological, physical effects of exercise. Like everybody knows, or at least most people know, if you exercise properly and you do it consistently, you decrease your risk of Pretty much all chronic diseases, you know, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, etc. You get leaner. You have you can move better. You have less pain. Of course, you look better. Everybody knows that, but very few people know that the psychological and mental effects are literally just as profound, like just as profound. So I looked up studies on depression, for example. Exercise is at least as effective as uh, current antidepressant medications for helping people with mild to moderate forms of depression, which is the most common forms of depression. And I say at least as effective because the studies are only so long, but what they look like is as they, as the studies extend and get longer, that exercise actually starts to outperform medications, probably because there's no tolerance buildup and no side effects, right? Because uh, the SSRIs, part. yeah. And then there's all the other aspects yeah. that you're getting with. Um, anxiety is another one. It's a very potent, both acutely and in the long term, mm. anti-anxiety uh, treatment to the point where they're now starting to consider it as a frontline treatment. If somebody has anxiety, they'll say, well, let's try um, exercise. Like, it's so profound. It's incredible. It's like as effective as it is for physical health, it's as effective uh, for mental health. So I think at some point, the conversation is going to change, and that's what we're really going to focus on. Is this, the resistance training revolution is coming. That's oh, it. yeah, thanks. I like it when you plug my book. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> dun, gotcha. Dun, dun. But anyway, by the way, um, I know your boy has been not doing so. He's been sick, right? Yeah, so what he did got, he have? He had croup? Yeah, croup or strider. I don't know if that's like the both. same. Yeah, there's different. Oh, so he has both, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, what yeah. he that's what he was uh, you know, diagnosed with, right? So he's got that. And they say uh, really common for kids. Yeah, yeah especially um, once you start introducing them to like like class settings, right? So he just started school. Yeah, he just started school, and uh, I know you, uh, Katrina's been talking to Courtney a lot because I know you guys actually battled that a lot with yeah, we Everett, went right? That a lot, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's a, you know it it's not scary because it's common, but there there's a scary side to it that as a parent. Because he can't breathe very well. Yeah. yeah. So during the day, it sounds he's, awful. Yeah, and during the day, he's actually pretty good. Like right now, he's running around playing, probably with Katrina. They're outside. It's probably a beautiful day, and you know he has a runny nose and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, he seems pretty good. But come nighttime, uh, he and he has to lay down and stuff. It starts to he gets all congested, and then it gets in his chest. Mm -hmm. And then what will happen? He'll like fall. He'll start to doze off, and then he'll it'll get all caught up, and he'll. <coughs> And he sounds like he's choking, and, he has, and then you, he'll wake up and sit up, and and the sound of him like gasping for air is just it's freaking. Oh, you know, man. no parent likes to hear that. That's so, kid. and they they say um, really cold air. So that was actually what Courtney was saying that you guys used to even open the freezer mm -hmm. and have the the cold air. And the doctor said that the cold the, the cold air will bring the inflammation down. That's why and open yeah. it up a little bit so that the air can get through there a little bit. And he said, you know, cold air outside or whatever. So. Last night, uh, and of course, this we literally have had the warmest uh, weather we've had uh, yet, yeah. right? So the first Ironically. time my house has even even hit seventy two degrees. Mm -hmm. So we opened everything up, which for me I love because Katrina doesn't like to sleep like that, and she was putting him to sleep. Yeah, because it gets really cool where you're at at night. Oh yeah, really cool. What's so, it get down to like, like the 50s? fifty? Yeah, 52, 55. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it gets it gets even in the the hottest part of the summer, it gets all the way down to that. So, anyways, she was doing that. Um, 
I was laughing. Like last night was the first time that I turned my chili pad to heat for her because she's been sleeping with Max in our bed. And she told me the other night when she was doing this that she rolled over, you know, already cold because everything's all cool in the house and some like of that to try and help him. Humidifiers blow and stuff. And then my side freezing her out. And I'm not <laughs> even in there, right? So I turn I turn mine all the way up so the whole bed was like nice and warm so she could be warm there but then the air is cold for him so he could breathe so Did it help? Oh yeah, I mean I mean the, the chili pad helped Katrina more than anything else keeping her yeah, her warm. But the cold but, air helped your But boy? the cold air made a huge difference. It made a huge difference. Like he I mean he still is getting up like that but I mean the nights before it was like I almost scary how long he was like gasping for oh, air yeah it, fr it freaked me out a little bit like where i was like we would put him down in his bed and then he'd wake up a couple hours later normally when like the medicine or something would wear off mm -hmm. and then he'd wake up like that and you could hear him on the the nanit and i was like go get him like and i'm normally like we're always good about like you know keep him in his room keep him we don't ever want to train him that coming in our room is okay yeah. but like right now i'm like no it's this is exceptional rule so mom and dad aren't getting very much sleep. we've actually this has been um Worse for me than any time of him being a, you know, I remember told you guys that I was really lucky. Katrina really handled a lot of the nights and it wasn't rough for us with his sleep. He was a good baby. Uh, so I never felt that really, really rough, you know, go that most parents do for the first month or two yeah. of having him. Uh, this week has been rougher than anything. Like between her and I, like he's, he's up every couple hours and, so like we're having to take shifts where it's like I'll I'll come home today right as soon as I get home she'll be like could you take him I just need to go nap for two mm -hmm. or three hours because between uh, her and I we're not getting a lot of sleep throughout the night right now that's the worst feeling as a parent because if they're like they're sick and there's nothing you can do yeah. I mean you're doing everything you can yeah we've nailed everything I know you were sending suggestions and I'm like dude we already went through all the herb list and all the natural oh, foods and things that. to avoid and stay stay away from and he doesn't have much of an appetite. But he, I mean, the fact that he's just got like a, a common cold, I'm not worried. It's just, it's hard to see him go through that. That's it. Yeah. He, and he's doing this thing right now, which I've never had him do before, where he'll just, uh, he does a, this kind of whi this whining where he just, you could tell he's uncomfortable and doesn't yeah, feel not good. good yeah. I know. I'm like, oh, buddy, I can't do anything. I'm so oh, sorry. I hate that. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Speaking of the, uh, the chili, by the way, my, my brother moved, didn't have the chili. So he'd been using it for a while because remember, they sent us that one. And yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I love it, whatever. Anyway, he didn't have it for a little while. And he goes, dude, I didn't realize the difference it made in my sleep. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't have it. And he's like, I, I wake up stiffer. I don't have, I don't feel as rested. He goes, it's dramatic what a difference it makes to cool you your know, bed down. I really feel like that a lot of, like a lot of the stuff that we talk about. Um, another good example is that like Felix Gray, right? Uh, partners and stuff that we, if you don't pay attention to like sleep routine and like, what like consistently pay attention which let's be honest like where i'm a fitness dude and i really didn't for most of my career pay attention to that like yeah. you know what was i doing to get ready for sleep what kind of quality of sleep was i getting to me it was just like oh it was good or bad i had a good night's rest oh i had a bad night's rest not like really trying to analyze like oh wow i'm i noticed i've been very consistent with this it takes clients having it and then not having it to tell. So the same thing I get for feedback on Felix Gray's is the same thing that you just yeah. said with Chili Pad. Yep. It's like one of those things where people are like, yeah, I don't, because it's not like one of those things you're going to do and be like, oh my goodness, yeah. I just noticed this huge difference. It's like you do it for a while and you start to consistently get better sleep. Then you take it out and, and then, then you, you go, notice. then you yeah. notice, then you go like, oh yeah. wow, I didn't realize what, what an impact it was mm -hmm. making. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the show. Real quick, head over to Drink L M N T dot com forward slash mind pump this company makes electrolyte powders with no sugar that improve performance now here's the difference between element and other products they actually have the appropriate levels of sodium now you need sodium for muscle contractions for health now what i notice from it are better workout pumps i get great pumps when i use element before and during my workouts this is especially valuable for those of you that don't eat processed food or those of you that are on a low carb diet Again, head over to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump and get a free sample pack. That's right. They're hooking everybody up with a free sample pack. All you got to do is pay shipping. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is James from Georgia. Hey, what's up, James? How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm so excited to be here today. Like, I can't believe I'm actually talking to you guys. This is a dream come true. Um, so... A little bit about me. I'm currently in the Army National Guard right now, and I'm hoping to go to Ranger School this upcoming April. 
Um, my current goal, I'm trying to increase my endurance so that I can pass a range of physical fitness tests, which requires me to be able to do 49 push-ups in two minutes, 59 sit-ups in two minutes, five mile run and 40 minutes or less, six pull-ups. Um, and then my personal goal is to get my five mile run down to 35 minutes here at home. So that way there's no doubt that I can go to the ranger school and pass the RPFT. Um, I'm also trying to increase my endurance with rucking 12 miles with a 43 pound ruck. I need to be able to do this, uh, 12 mile ruck in three hours or less. Um, let's see. About a month and a half ago, I hired a personal trainer. Um, I found a guy on Instagram. Um, he claimed to have gone to ranger school. He claimed to have worked with um, Special Forces Group and he claims to have been training soldiers like myself who want to go to ranger school or SF selection on the side for the past four or five years. Um, he's been having me do a lot of Metcons with long distance running as well as strength training all on the same training day. For example, in the, first, in the first month, he had me doing four days a week of something like um, one of the training days was bench, uh, three sets, four to six, 85% of your training max, deadlift, um, building up 85% and doing doing two sets at 85% of three to six reps. Um, then doing a 21, 15, and nine pull-ups and wall ball um, and toaster bar. Uh, Metcon as fast as you can. And then going into incline dumbbell bench, three sets of eight dumbbell hammer curls, three sets, 10 to 12, and then going in for a five mile run at the end of it. Hmm. Um, it was killing me doing stuff like that. I had not been doing Metcons. I'd been running um, all of y'all's maps programs, maps aesthetics, maps anabolic, maps performance, maps strong, um, maps anywhere. I've been doing maps prime. And at all. I mean, uh, y'all made y'all's programs and, you know, like there's no Metcons in any of those. <laughs> <laughs> I Intentionally, was, yes. <laughs> I was dying. Uh, um, yeah. So after the first month, I talked to the guy, um, told him I couldn't do four days a week. I'm currently a RN that works in the hospital at a pediatric cardiac ICU, works night shift. And doing four days a week, I mean, I was going in there off of no sleep, having the caffeine up um, just to be able to get through everything. And by the end of it i mean it was doing everything i could just to get home i bet um since then talked to the guy um he's got me down doing three days a week now pretty much the same style of training um let's see yeah doing three days a week the same style of training um i followed you guys for about three years now um i feel like he's just throwing everything in the kitchen sink at me um, without any real progression strategies. Um, he also refuses to give out his personal phone number for me to be able to contact him or his actual last name. So I have no idea to even <laughs> verify if this, this dude just, is telling yeah. me the truth about anything. <laughs> so friend claims to have found him on Facebook. Apparently she's good at stalking people. I don't know. It was kind of an eye opener, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Believe her. Girls are really good. At <laughs> yeah. Women but, are good. find a way. Anyways, like he wants me to contact him through his like company's Instagram and his company's email instead. And he's pretty quick to email me back, but it's still kind of weird. I mean, y'all have given me little red flags to look out for and he kind of checks them all off. So my question basically is what would y'all recommend me do to increase my running endurance and rucking um, to get a five mile time to 35 minutes, a 12 mile ruck and three hours or less and then just trying to maintain as much muscle mass as possible to help me not get injured yeah mm -hmm. how many times a week right now are you doing the rucking right now how, how how often do you do you test this um so what i do for rucking um the rucking i've not as worried about i've been doing it for four years now um the best way i've learned to train for rucking is actually by biking um it's got my ruck time down from three hours to in college i was doing a 12 mile ruck with a 50 pound ruck in two hours and 15 minutes okay mm, pretty good you know you know the, something that a lot of people uh kind of don't consider when it comes to you know passing physical type tests is that a great deal a, a, a large percentage of your success doing those tests is actually getting good at the skill of the components of that test okay so to give you an example, um, you know, you let's say you, you, you wanted to get better at doing pull-ups. Well, yeah, you can make your lats stronger, you can make your back stronger doing different exercises. 
But one of the best strategies would be just to practice pull-ups because that'll get you back your back stronger, but also it's practicing the skill that you need to actually, you know, do in this particular test. So training for specific tests are, isn't as complicated as people think. I think one of the best strategies you could do is literally practice the tests a couple days a week, two or three days a week, do the tests that they're going to be asking you to do in order to, you know, get into ranger school. And then you may want to add one day a week of basic traditional strength training with mobility. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably be just fine. If anything, you'll notice that you'll you'll improve you'll improve at a pretty rapid rate. I'm glad you stopped what you were doing earlier when you noticed that you just Get had no energy to go to smashed, work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's been your tires in the dirt. Yeah, that's a really, really big red flag. Like you should not feel like you're totally zapped and your performance is uh, declining when you're doing a workout. Well, if there's if he's not doing any, if the test, the ranger school doesn't require you to do wall ball, there's no fucking reason for you to be doing that. Mm. There's other than to just exhaust you to exhaust you. So it makes no sense. It makes no sense to do a movement like that if it's not going to benefit anything else that you're doing. But, you know, you, you are, he is an example, though, of somebody who, you know, we talk about weight vests, like always the, yeah. the knucklehead guy who's wearing a weight vest in the gym that probably has no business wearing it. Yeah. This is a perfect example of somebody, though, that this is, I would do the test and I would slowly scale the weight vest, right? So I would, I would run the test with mm -hmm. a light va weight, weight vest, improve my time, start to slowly add weight to the vest, sure. slowly add weight. Before you know it, you're going to, you're blazing through the test with, you know, 40, 50, 60 pounds on you. And then whatever you need to do for the, t I don't know what the weight, what's the weight for the actual test? 40, 50, 30, you know, 35 pounds. Is that what he said? Yeah. For uh, the ruck, it's a 45 pounds. Oh, 45, 45 pounds. pounds. Yeah. yeah. So if you could get up to where you're doing 50 pounds, you know, mm. going, going through the test, like. You, is this incline or are you doing it on like roads? It's on a road. So it'll be some incline, some decline. Yeah. So he here's a good example of kind of what I'm talking about when I say, you know, use the test as your workout. What that doesn't mean is three days a week you do the exact test. So in other words, you don't do the exact 49 push-ups and as fast as you can and you know, run your five miles and try and get it under 40 minutes. What it means is you're doing the exact same exercises but in different, uh, you know, different intensities and volumes. So for example, and this is just I'm throwing this out there, one day a week you may do the actual test. So you're doing the exact numbers, the exact times that you're aiming for yeah, and distances. And trying to improve. Each and time. trying to improve it. The other one other day a week, it might be half. So cut mm -hmm. everything in half and then do the other do the exact test. And then a third day a week would be down to a third. So you're almost doing like a sprint um, in your training. So something like that would, would get you to improve quite dramatically. And then one day a week of like Whoa. four to five compound lifts mm -hmm. and some mobility work. Um, and you're probably going to be better than okay. Where, where would you say is your biggest area of struggle uh, in, in all run. those different items? The run? The run. Okay. I can get the push-ups on. I can get the sit-ups. I can find the pull-ups. The ruck, I'm not really that worried about. It's just one of those things that you just got to push through. Mm -hmm. But the run, um, my five-mile run right now is currently sitting at like 43 minutes. Um, and that's well-rested going into the run at Ranger School. It's going to be at six o'clock bright and early um, in the morning, probably earlier than that. Um, we'll go into our range of physical fitness test. So it's going to be straighten the push ups um, for two minutes, straighten the sit ups, straighten to the run. And are you getting up to, at six and, and sort of emulating that some days uh, with your running schedule? Uh, the, sorry, what was that? <laughs> are are you emulating that in terms of like what time of the day you train and everything else? I try to. Um, working nights is a little bit difficult. Usually, oh, um, yeah. My my training schedule now is I work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, at the hospital. Today's Wednesday. It's usually a rest day because I try to wake up around two o'clock so I can flip myself back to days and not be mm. a night owl with nothing going on. Well, the and endurance part is going to be something that Thursday, you're Friday, down. Saturday. I'll get up early and go run. Okay. Yeah. Just, just a gradual progression of that. If that's the area of focus, I would just like gradually start to include that a bit more throughout the week and, and start, you know, adding a bit more time devoted to that. Yeah. The, the other thing that I might, I might add that Sal, you didn't say on those example days is, you know, you, a, a strength day where you actually load all these things, right? So maybe you're not getting 58 push ups or 69 sit ups or 
six pull-ups or whatever, but load a, do a heavy day. Sure. Do a heavy loaded day and get strong at all those movies, very, movements. Very uh, very rarely do you see people do like loaded sit-ups, but this would be a perfect yeah. example of one of those three or four days I would do like some loaded sit-ups yeah. to get strong. So, so in other words, you're doing the same skills a few days a week. Some days it's the same distance and exactly like the test. Some days it's loaded and much shorter uh, amount of time yeah, or more reps. More strength focused. Right. Other days it's shorter and faster. So you're practicing on sprinting through. Instead of running five miles, you're running two miles, but you're running it really fast. Um, so that's that's what we what I mean by p focusing on the skill of what you're doing. You definitely want to do some mobility work too because you're doing the same movements over and over again. So you're running a lot. You're doing a lot of push-ups, a lot of pull-ups. If you don't do mobility work, if your technique and form is even off a little bit, you could find yourself with some nagging injuries and then forget it, right? You're not able to do what you want to do because uh, things hurt. And then one day a week, you do like four basic strength training exercises, and you should not fatigue yourself. You're just kind of practicing your deadlifts and your squats and your presses and that kind of stuff. And then you're, you're probably pretty much set. Now, the other part of your question was, keeping as much muscle mass as possible. I, I would forget, not that you're not going to keep muscle mass, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about aesthetics. Don't worry about anything else. Not only that, that actually is not advantageous for what we're yeah, training for hinder, right now. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. focus on performance because the ranger schools, they don't give a shit what you look like and how great your pecs look. They only care about your performance. Now, after that, after you pass, and you know maybe you can train for aesthetics and that kind of stuff a little later, but for now, it's all focused on performance, and nothing is going to give you a greater return than actually practicing the things that you have to do in the test. I mean, it's, it's quite remarkable. I mean, there, I've, I've trained with athletes and people where I beat them at exercises all day long, but then when we do a specific st skill, even if it uses the same muscles that I typically am stronger at, they kick my ass because they practice those skills so often. So don't discredit that. What you don't want to do is look at your overall general fitness as the goal, although that is an important thing to focus on, you want to look at the skills because the Rangers school is testing you specifically on skills. What they're not saying is we're going to generally test your endurance and we're not going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to generally test your, your chest and tricep strength, but we're not going to tell you what it is. They're literally telling you you're running, you're doing push-ups, you're doing pull-ups, you're doing sit-ups, and you're going to be doing a ruck. So because you know those specific things, you got to get good at them. Yeah, majority get, of your get, get strong at them, build endurance that's around it. them. I mean, that's it's focused around mainly around that. And like you said, I, Sal, I would only add a couple of the big, you know, four lifts in there just to complement some of that stuff. But yes. it would, I would not do it to fatigue. I would do straight sets, plenty of rest. I think that would be a, a great strategy for you. Yeah, anytime somebody needs to take a test for something, what they're actually it's it's almost like this. Like, okay, let me ask you a question, right? Let's say I was going to test you on uh, general physiology, and I'm not going to tell you on human physiology, and I'm not telling you what I'm testing you on. You'd have to learn th the whole human body to prepare for some random test. But what if I told you, here's the 10 questions that I'm going to ask you on the test. What are you going to spend your time focusing on, right? You're not going to waste your time on general physiology. If you want to pass a test, you're going to focus specifically on the 10 things that I'm going to test you on. So that's they're, they're literally giving you the workout. That the only real thing you need to focus on programming is one day a week do exactly what they're going to test you on. One day a week do it maybe half distance, half volume, try and do it faster, and another day a week do it even shorter but maybe loaded. And there you go. Okay. Now you're kind of phasing each one of those skills for strength, strength endurance, and then just endurance, and it's going to make you better at the test. Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent. Now, I know you said you had a lot of our programs. <laughs> yeah, you have them all. Get them in the forum. <laughs> yeah. Are you in our forum, James? Um, I think I am still. I haven't paid for it in a while, but. Okay. So I'm here's what we're going to do. But... We're going to charge you because you've been skating by without, <laughs> yeah. without paying. What the hell's going on? You've been getting no, away scot-free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if, if you are in there, James, what I would like, uh, if you decide to fire your, your no-name trainer, is I would like for you Todd. to yeah. hit to uh, yeah, every month really. or so or every few weeks go in there and and, and tag us. Yeah, I would love to hear the update on this. Ask questions and there's other people in there. We have other military people in there who are okay. experienced and other trainers and just you know get some consensus and kind of get some virtual coaching you know that mm -hmm. way i think that'll that'll benefit you greatly and and then, if, if you're not in there we'll get, we'll let you in for free by the way and then james yeah. what is what's the etiquette if uh if you and i are friends and you pass ranger school and you get one of those shirts can i wear one is that like okay or is that like frowned upon <laughs> i'm serious serious question i mean i can i can definitely get you one 
I don't, I don't want it until you make it. When you make it, I want one, and then I rock it. And then if people ask me, I'll say James is my friend. Yeah, I don't and, think you can okay. say you're a ranger. It's got to say something like yeah. no, no, no. My, I used to have one. My boy, because my boy had one, and it, it just says ranger across the six shirt. Yeah. I, I know you know, right, James? Yeah. Yeah. They you, look awesome. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, and not and they don't just like hand them out all over the place. Yeah. So it's like they're rare to right. get a hold of. And I, I want to make sure I have a friend that I can say that's it, that's a ranger right now. So when you get past, you do that, you hit me up, yeah. and then yeah. you do all the hard work, and we'll wear the shirt. <laughs> yeah. 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 S- send us an Sounds extra good. medium, <laughs> extra medium, please. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, James. All right. Thank y'all. No problem. Right on. Yeah, when you it's uh when you have a specific test, you know that they're going to test you on. They're literally giving you generally the workout that you want it's almost why like they're it, giving you the answers why, why do why does this uh, crossfit make it way into so many things like this <laughs> because that's I mean, what they think is like i gotta get all this endurance and strength all at once and and so it just that's the one where everything gets you know so muddy because you, they just smash it all together you know what i it, you know it kind of works that's why because for a if, very temporary window. If, I mean, if this poor guy wasn't, it works t- better than nothing. I guess. Right. Well. Yeah. Well. I mean, if he wasn't, if he wasn't like, uh, you know, go working and had a, a life on top of training, he probably could sustain this, you know, ridiculous amount of training that they have him going on, and he'd probably build so much resiliency that he would be able to power through the test and actually do okay. So maybe he would pass this test with this going this route. But there's such a smarter way to go about it. I love the analogy. Yeah. I've never I've never heard any of us use the analogy like that. Like you're right. Like you have a test. Mm-hmm. You know what the questions are. Mm-hmm. You could go study a million other things related to that. You know all the other exercises <laughs> that, yeah. that exist, or just refine what's actually going to be there. Yeah, or yeah. just know those ten yeah. questions inside and out. And I love breaking that apart, like you said, with different uh, approaches to each one of those types of exercises. So you do it fast, you do it long. You, you know, you do like a, a, you know a slower, gradual kind of progression of it. That's well, I, I think that I could add a little bit to what you said because that one. One would I definitely think that you should do a, a heavy strength component. Sure, you know I think that would. It's like benefit. phasing the test, right? Yeah, I, I think a heavy strength, and then I would actually even do one that probably pushes him a little bit further, so that really push the endurance. Yeah, aspect. so yeah. and then exactly, it's just more focus on maybe he doesn't have the 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 vest on or he has half the weight yeah. on the vest, and then I would exceed yeah. the uh, the distance or go past the amount of time that you're That's supposed what I mean. to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So give him so he's so he's building that tank a little bit. So you have like an endur an endurance day. Right. You have kind of like a a really heavy yep. power str- a strength day, and then something maybe in the I mean, middle. But the key yeah. is you're practicing the same skills right, that right. they're going to test you on. You know that makes uh, right. the biggest the absolute biggest difference. I mean, look if one of the biggest examples of what we're talking about. Is the Olympics right? The Olympics are is one of the most competitive places where you're going to see athletic performance worldwide. And in the early days of the Olympics, what people thought would make the best athlete was general athletes. So shot putters, long distance runners, wrestlers, they all kind of looked the same. Mm-hmm. But eventually, because they're so competitive and you wanted your country to win, you started to notice what was called the democratization of these particular events, where shot putters look nothing like long distance runners. And that's because to be a very good shot putter means you probably look a lot different and train a lot different. Yeah, different leverage. That's right. So if they're telling you what they're going to test you on, practice those skills and only do other skills as a way to prevent injury, right. to prevent imbalances, to improve mobility. But the whole approach where you're like, oh, you need strength and endurance. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do all this stuff that's around strength and endurance and do very little of the skills that they're going to test you on. That's that's the wrong approach, complete wrong approach. Our next caller is Jack from Missouri. Hey, what's up, Jack? How, how can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? How are you doing today? Good, man. Good. All right. So um, quick background to start. Uh, I'm a 20-year-old um, college student right now. Um I've been lifting for about six years, but um, the first three were in high school and it was mainly centered around football and um, basketball and track. So it wasn't necessarily all calculated out. It was more performance based. Um, But um, so I left or I entered my senior year at 280. Um, I was a D tackle, so I was eating everything I could see. So. left or entered that year 280 um right now i'm about 190 but the lowest i got was 175 
But I've been, for about the past six months, I've been reverse dieting and on a bulk. And I've gotten the calories up from about 1,800 at the beginning based off some skewed thing I saw online to 3,500 right now. And that is about a couple hundred over my maintenance. But um, adjusting to getting in 35 100 has been a little bit difficult and some days I'll get home later than expected and I don't really feel like putting down two pounds of meat or um, six cups of rice or some shit like that. So I don't and I miss out on the calories that day. So my question is, if I uh, don't reach the calorie macro goal um, for one day and hit under by about 600 or more give or take um should i try and make those calories up the next day and add them to what i was already planning on eating or should i try and disperse it out throughout the rest of the week or should i just um omit it and call it good first of all jack you're you're kicking ass dude um and say did you say you're 20 I am twenty. Yes, you sir. sound like a like man, man. Like, <laughs> right? Does he not? Does he not sound like he doesn't sound twenty to me for some reason? Yeah. You don't sound twenty, bro. Yeah. Well, you got up to what two eighty? You said. Like, yeah, yeah, dude. Like, no, you're you are beast. You're doing but, phenomenal. Right yeah, that's now. a huge increase in your caloric intake yes, and maintaining. Dude, that's uh, that's phenomenal. Very, very yeah, good. Yeah, I should have. I should thank you very much. I should never have been that low. I'm pretty sure I saw something uh, when I was starting out, um, beginning of quarantine. that said like sixteen hundred calories was what I should be eating. Being six four and two eighty, that is not what I should have been eating. So. No, no, but you're in a you're in a great place, and uh, it would be interesting to hear what the other guys add. But I actually wouldn't worry too much about those days. And, and the only thing that I would caution you, okay? So what ha the, this happens to me when I'm bulking, and I know sometimes it's hard. Like I've been up to places where I'm pushing four or five thousand calories, and then I'd have those moments where I'm like, shit. I can't, I'm a thousand calories behind and I'm already fooled. Like, do I stuff myself? No, I'm not going to stuff myself. But what I always notice on those days when I go to bed lighter on calories, the next day, I my, the appetite like kicks up. And then that's also the times where I, I tend to play this game in my head where I go like, well, I was a thousand calories low yesterday. I'm starving right now. So today I'm going to swing by and get that double bacon cheeseburger and fries that I really wanted that I haven't had in a long time. And you, you kind of play that game and you tend to go off your plan because you're so hungry and you make worse. Decisions. Other than that. If you actually stay on the diet the next day and you eat good and you're solid, I actually wouldn't even worry about the day or two here and there that you actually don't hit your target. Yeah, you're, you're overthinking it, mm -hmm. 100%. You're, you're, you're doing a great job. Um, I mean, unless you have a specific, like, targeted goal where you're like, okay, I'm going to gain this much lean body mass by this point, or I'm going to get on stage. Oh, yeah, that's a different Or story. I'm going to compete. But if you're... If your goal is just, you know, you want to keep doing this, you like it, you enjoy it. it sounds like you do. You've been doing it for five years. You started as, as a 15 year old and you're, you're 20 now. So you've probably built pretty good consistency, discipline, and you probably have a good relationship with it for the most part, just because you started so young. I think you're overthinking it, man. Don't worry about it. Now, some days are going to be lower. Naturally, you'll probably make up for it on other days. But I mean, you got your calories over 3,000 and you feel good. And on some days it feels like you're it's maybe too high. Yeah, don't worry about it, dude. You're yeah. doing fine. Listen to your body. Keep going on the track that you're going on because what you don't want to do is create a kind of stressful environment around your food where you're like, oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm under calories. Do I stuff myself? How do I make up for this tomorrow? Do I spread this out over the next whatever days? You're 20. You're 20 years old. Like that. This is a type of stress that why, why add this to your life? You're doing absolutely fine. I would seriously not worry about it. For the most part, you're based on what you're telling me. You're crushing. You're kicking ass. Sounds like you're getting a lot of it from Whole Foods too. Are you supplementing at all? Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get a lot from Whole Foods. It's kind of on the college budget, so it's just uh, cheapest I can do right now is just a shit ton of chicken thighs. But um. But yeah, I'm supplementing. I'm just taking. Uh, I mean fish oil, creatine, uh, protein, pre-workout, kind of like the basics, um, ashwagandha, multi. Um, I actually ordered um, some uh, mastzymes um, the oh, other cool. day using your guys' code, so thank you for that one. And so those will add the join the crew, but yeah, that's about it. Have you, yeah. have you tried the enzymes yet? 
I have not, no, sir. Yeah, I'd like to hear your feedback on on how that helps with digestion, especially mm-hmm. when you're pushing calories. It made a big yeah, yeah. That's big, exactly what I was going for because um, I mean, there are going to be some meals that are um, much greater than the other ones, so digestion help would be yeah. killer. For but I, I swear to God, Jack, you're you're, you're doing you're, great. Yeah, yeah, you're overthinking yeah, I got it. Nothing. Yeah, you're, you're totally overthinking it. Just you're, you're good if you miss a day because you weren't that hungry or you felt like you had to stuff yourself. Okay, no big deal. Um, you just go back on the next day. Don't worry about. Uh, trying to make up for it. Now, here's the other side, like what, what Adam was saying, although he kind of explained it as something that might be negative. Don't freak out about it, but if the next day you're hungrier and instead of going to 3,300 calories, you go up to 35 or 36, okay, that's okay. You know, our bodies, really, we didn't evolve eating the same amount of calories every single day. We probably ate a lot sometimes and very little other times. There's there There's probably some health benefits to doing so. Plus, life works itself out that way. There's going to be some days where you're going to want to go out with your girlfriend or hang out with your buddies and you're going to eat a little more. And there's going to be times when you're like, you know what? Like, here's what happens for me. Like, if there's days where we're doing a lot of podcasts and interviews, I like to eat less on those days. I feel sharper. I'm faster on my on my feet, so to speak. Um, and so those days I just eat a little bit less and it's not that big of a deal. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility on other days to do that, but don't overthink it. You don't want to create this kind of stressful environment around no, no. exercise and nutrition. You're doing so good. The, the only thing, like I said, I would caution is just being aware of your behaviors, right? So I I know the tendencies that I have when I under consume by that many calories on one day is I tend the appetite is kind of roaring. And then that also is what will make me make, I might eat a whole bag of that. If there, I was going to eat a whole bag of chips one day, like that's the day it would happen because I'm, I'm so low on calories from the previous day. Yeah. I'm, I'm hungry right now. And so I go, oh, I'll have a little bit extra calories like Sal was saying, but then a little extra calories ends up being 2000 in carbohydrates. I miss my protein intake for a day. And that's the only the only thing I can see negative about what you're doing already is if you're aware of that and you know that's the 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 tendencies that you may or may not have and just caution it, pay attention to that. Uh, having a, a low day every once in a while actually is probably very, very, very beneficial yeah. to you. Now, Jack, we like to give people something free when they ask us a question. Do you have, I, based on what you're saying, you've been working out for a while. Yeah, what program are you You following? probably got a good workout. Uh, are you following any MAPS programs at all? Um, I'm not. I've uh, I've read about um, anabolic, um, strong performance, and aesthetic to try and see um, which one would kind of fit. I, like I told you, I'm in a bulking thing right now. And, um, well, with, yeah. with your experience, I would go anabolic or aesthetic. I mean, you've been working out for, for a while now. Aesthetic might even be appropriate for you. So, How many days a week are you training? Um, I know this is against your guys' advice, but uh, – seven and i'm doing five lifting and then the other two days i watch your guys uh the webinar for um mobility for, uh, mobility yeah and i do the mobility routine <laughs> nice. i do some cardio and i do some recovery yeah you're doing you're doing good at that either <laughs> you're doing good all right we're going to send you maps aesthetic so if you want to follow one of our programs i think that one will probably be appropriate for someone with your level of experience yeah and awareness around so exercise. Killing. Thank you guys. Yeah, so go, go there, and then I the next one I'd love to see you do is strong. I think strong would be great for where you're at right now. Yeah, yeah, you're doing great, bro. Yeah. Good job, man. Thanks for calling. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, also, um, I know you guys hear it with every single um, goddamn call you get, but I, you guys have actually like changed my perspective on uh, health and fitness because you aren't putting out like the normal bullshit like do this like for 30 days to drop 50 pounds or some shit you're putting out stuff that is meant to optimize health and mental health as well and i think that is killer and i've put or i've tried to put basically my entire campus onto your guys podcast i put my whole family on it Uh, um, awesome can't get enough ears so thank you all very much much appreciated Appreciate yeah thank you appreciate the support jack thank you bro yeah, of course. Take care, all. Yeah. So, you know, what I want to talk about is how his voice made you feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he sound like a 20 year old yeah, to you? Dude. Dude, no. He's nothing, a man. Not, yeah. Even like the way he talked, his cadence. Was, yeah. it, did, he did not, he sound like just a grown ass man. Did he look, what did he look like, Doug? Did he look like a grown ass man or what? Like yeah, he does. Guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, he doesn't look, uh, you know, 20. old or young. He 20s just, is yeah. young, dude. That's, well, he, dude he's, he's way ahead of the. And he's crushing. Yes, he is. He's cru- You know what I like about hearing about something like this is that because he started so young, he started at the age of 15. Mm-hmm. He's stuck with it this entire time. He's at the age of 20. 
he's where a lot of people will be, uh, you know, with exercise in their 30s uh, because he's now after you've done it for if you've done it, if you worked out consistently for five plus years, that's when you really start to figure things out a little bit, I think, yeah. uh, especially if you have a, a healthy approach. So it's really cool to hear, you know, to hear his his kind of his input. But yeah, you know, the thing about nutrition and exercise is at the end of the day, uh, it should not add stress to your life. If it does, it can become something that's unhealthy itself. So, you know, if you're doing good and everything's going great, you, you don't want to like freak out because one day is off. That'll do the exact opposite of what you're trying to accomplish with, uh, you know, a fit and healthy lifestyle. Yeah, and even I mean, I love this guy, dude. The, even his, uh, you know, he was a he was yeah. <laughs> it's a little man crush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even his seven day approach to fitness, I like. Yeah, it was good. Oh, yeah. you know, say, right? He started to say it like, I know you guys don't like this, but then when he said, I'm like, yeah, but Fuck. that's five days of resistance training. He's doing mobility two days. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm about it, dude. So I like everything that this guy's doing right now. I think he's got a great uh, relationship with exercise. I think he's got a great. I think he, the fact that he's gone from 1800 calories up to 3000 plus calories yeah. that's that's awesome and then he's actually in a place where he's like oh i'm full for the day like what a great place to be you know uh, the only thing and i just that when i know when i eat low calories like that my body wants to make up for it sometimes the next day and if i if i do stray if i do make a, yeah it's that day yep, you yep. know and you and you kind of play that justification like what totally. you said ah yeah. you know i ate way less yesterday yeah. and so yeah five guys two bacon cheeseburgers today i think i'm gonna Ooh. do that <laughs> i might want one of those later <laughs> what are you doing to me right now adam our next caller is sir hod from california hey what's up sir hod how can we help you hey guys how's it going good all right so a few months ago um I had this uh, lower back pain and uh, funny enough, just a day later, my a shoulder pain. And I wasn't able to tell exactly on uh, how it happened. It was probably due to repetitive um, exercising and a little bit overdoing it. So I decided to uh, take a break for a few weeks and uh, just do some light training and uh, swap lifting with some cardio. And a few weeks later, maybe I'll recover and I can get back to my uh, actual lifting. So two weeks, three weeks passed by. I'm doing a cardio. I'm not lifting. And uh, I didn't feel like I was getting better. And the more I put cardio, the more I started doing cardio, it became this kind of like I got stuck in this situation where I'm doing more and more cardio and less and less lifting. And um, my appetite started dropping as well because I wasn't lifting as much. So I wasn't sending those uh, build muscle signals. And uh, so I got stuck in this situation where I'm doing a little more cardio less lifting and uh, because of uh, my injuries. So I went within this route for a couple months and now I have, I'm a little bit better on the hip, but shoulder still bothering me. So I started including some lifts in my routine and uh, surprisingly, I can do any leg movements, like any leg training uh, really well. The hip doesn't bother me but the shoulder actually bothers me on my presses and any overhead movement is uh, out of the charts. It, I just can't do it. So I'm doing very little lifting, like maybe two days a week, I do a really good leg session, but the uh, rest of the week is mostly light uh, weightlifting, light uh, arms and maybe some uh, deadlifts and uh, carries. And since I'm uh, not, not as active as in, anymore, I still am doing a little bit of cardio and I'm doing a little bit of HIT as well because I want to uh, I want to use uh, the HIT's uh, ability to uh, maintain some muscle mass because that's what the research, research shows. And but also I'm stuck in this low calorie uh, ish uh, situation and I'm trying to reverse out of it, but I'm kind of happy with how I look right now. Although I've lost, uh, like more than enough, uh, muscle mass. I kind of, I'm, I'm okay with how I'm looking with this, uh, right now, but I'm trying, I, I feel like my calories are really low for someone, um, 
as active as I am, uh, especially with cardio, but I'm afraid to bump it up because I'm not lifting as much. So I'm not sending those muscle building signals. And I'm afraid that any additional calories that I'm going to put in are going to be converted to uh, fat instead of building muscle. So my question is, um, how, how would you guys uh, plan your uh, diet and your trainings in situations like this? And if you want to learn more on um, like what exercises I can do and can't, uh, feel free to ask. And uh, I just didn't thought maybe uh, to go into those details. Yeah. So, Sirhad, so uh, let me paint a scenario for you, okay? Imagine you're driving your car, and every time you turn to the left, you hear a loud clanging noise. So every time you go left, you hear a loud clanging noise. Now, there's two things you could do. You could either go to the mechanic, and they can address why that's happening, or you could stop turning left, okay? So the, ch the choice that you've made is to stop turning left. You're basically saying, here's what's hurting. I'm going to stop doing that, and I'm just going to do other stuff, and then maybe it'll get better on its own. It won't. The problem is you're not addressing the root cause. I really don't care about anything else that you're doing if you can't figure out why your shoulder's hurting and why your lower back is hurting. And it sounds like you've done nothing specific to rehab those areas. You've done no specific mobility work. Don't worry about exercises to build your shoulders and to develop your body. If you can't address the root cause, none of those matter anyway. It really doesn't matter. So I could help and kind of try to assess here through this call. I, I noticed I could kind of see you on video. It looks like you're pointing to the front of your shoulder when you're talking about front uh, shoulder pain. Is it in the front of your shoulder? Yeah, it's the it's the front of the uh, rotator cuff here, the point where it connects to the upper chest, yeah, but it mm -hmm. also shoots down to the elbow a little mm -hmm. here in like this corner. Yeah, that's And so that also prevents me from doing uh, heavy bicep yeah. work as that's, well. That's not a rotator cuff. You probably have bicep, bicep tendon. Yeah, tendon. bicep tendon inflammation. The bicep tendon runs over the front of the shoulder. And it sounds like you have a little bit of AC joint pain. That's where the collarbone uh, kind of, there's that end joint there where the shoulder is. Um, so you could do some stretches and stuff for the bicep that'll help alleviate the pain in the short term. But in the long term, you probably need to work on what's called scapular mobility, retraction and stability. You're probably lacking some of that. Um, and I would focus primarily on shoulder mobility movements, hip mobility movements, uh, th maybe spine mobility movements, maybe some stuff for the ankles. That should be your primary focus. In fact, mm -hmm. I would do, that's all I would focus on for a little while before trying to figure out what exercises to do to develop those areas. I, w I would, I would drop one of those, uh, those days or limit, I would cut back on my cardio sessions and I would do uh, mobility work and the mobility work would, li I would live in the 90 nineties and all the variations and then the handcuff with rotation wall circles, Justin loves zone one stuff, everything that this is why, I mean, you were an example of why we wrote maps prime and prime pro was to, help people address this and here's the deal like the idea i get why you're doing cardio because you want to kind of combat the you know the lack of movement you're doing and calorie burn but let me tell you a 50 minute mobility session uh focused on the hips and shoulders where you literally spend 45 it minutes can be intense it man. can be very intense you'll be sweating you'll burn plenty of calories while you're also addressing the root cause of yeah. where this pain is coming from so and nothing's going to get you back to lifting weights sooner than that and when you're when you have uh maps prime for example so in there we do like a zone one test which would be addressing the shoulder area we also have strength exercises to support that you know that go with it so you have the mobility work that you do to address it and then as you start to progress and feel better there's specific exercises that we take uh, clients like yourself that are going through this to help strengthen that new range of motion that you've probably regained back from doing all the mobility work but um, yeah, you know, like Sal said, right now you're just avoiding the things, and they probably feel better because you stopped doing it. Inflammation comes down, uh, but you you still didn't address uh, the root cause of what's going on. Yeah, because we just build on top of that, and then you're going to get stronger in other areas, but eventually that's going to get exposed, and it's going to set you back. And so, 
I guess why we kind of are just all honing in on that is because it's a big signal for you to really focus on that and get your shoulder to function optimally again, because that's what we want to build upon. That's what we want to get uh, stronger and supported, uh, because then when we go back to actually lifting weights, you're going to feel that difference, too. It's going to be a performance enhancement. Not It's not this huge regression you're going through. And I think that's like the psychological challenge a lot of people face when, you know, they go through like these types of exercises, like think of it more as a performance enhancement. You're going to build up your entire body and be able to, uh, you know, really accelerate your progress. Yeah. Do you, okay. So do you have maps prime? Uh, that's uh, absolutely, actually, that's uh, funny you brought it up because I do have maps prime and maps prime pro. And before my injury, I have, I was doing like t at least 10 minutes before each session. I do my priming and uh, post priming after the session. And I had done those evaluations on uh, the three zones and I, uh, and I did not find any mobility issues. Like I can extend overhead my shoulder and do the uh, wall circles very well, like um, so not perfectly, but at least it, there's no like lack of motion and mm -hmm. same with the hip. But it's just that after uh, I got hurt, uh, I wasn't able to even do those movements because of the pain. Yeah. And that's why I'm struggling right mm -hmm. now because I don't know. Because I thought it was a mobility issue, but I was doing all of those before it happened. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. no, no, Sirhat, it is a mobility issue. The signs, the, the, the red flag is the pain, mm -hmm. right? So you're doing normal traditional exercises and it hurts. Now mobility doesn't just mean range of motion. It means how you're moving and how muscles are, are connecting. In fact, some of the people that I've trained in my entire life with the worst pain issues had incredible ranges of motion. They just had lack of control uh, and lack of stability. So here's what I want you to do. You have MAPS Prime, here's what I want you to do. Get him in the form so I can see some of his movement. Yeah, your workouts are gonna be the fortification sessions in MAPS Prime. So there's fortification sessions in MAPS Prime, which are actually correctional exercise-based workouts. So that's your workouts. Do those. And then the priming movements, I want you to do those three times a day, and I want you to slow them down. Don't worry about, oh, does it, you know, my range? No, focus on the connection. Yeah. Slow them down, connect to every single centimeter of movement. Now, and play within your edges, within your limits. What that means is yeah. if you're doing a Find priming. Your threshold. Yeah, if you're doing a priming movement and you notice that, oh, that's about as far as I could go, don't modify the movement. Stop right there and then slowly try to increase or improve upon that over time. But three times a day, I would do 10 minutes of those movements and then your workouts for now or fortification sessions slow everything down it's all about connection and feel don't worry about anything else connection and feel and over time you should be able to solve yeah. some of these if problems. you do a good job of finding those end ranges before the pain uh you're going to notice that the more frequently you apply these like you're going to be able to move that a bit further so it you know the pain itself will start uh, sort of dissipating at certain angles. Uh, and so you just got to be very gradual with this approach. So that way, you know, you can progress forward. Yeah. By the way, you know, this is sometimes very hard to do on your own. One of our challenges when we created our MAPS Prime and Prime Pro programs was exactly that people have a tough time assessing themselves, especially if they don't have a background in how to assess. And sometimes what, what, you'll, what a professional will see is so subtle that you would never notice yourself. So this makes it very challenging. Adam gave great advice. He said, get in our forum, post some of these movements, post videos. There's physical therapists and trainers. There's us in there. We can help. And then here's the other thing. This is, this is like if you really, really, really just want to get this fixed. Mm. We, have wor we have partnered with a company that offers physical therapy in your home, and it's totally covered by insurance. It's, you go to getluna.com. So if you have health insurance you can have a therapist who specializes in working with athletes and movement and correctional exercise come to your home for like you know five like a sessions real diagnosis ten se and they'll diagnose you right in front of them cuz i'm you know i've definitely worked with people where they show me a video i'm like man i can't really tell i got to get in front of this person and i have to walk around them while they're moving and the and the movement changes are so subtle that i wouldn't have been able to notice otherwise let alone somebody who has an untrained eye or somebody who's not a professional in that space. So 
that would be the other resort. If you really want to get this fixed, have someone come to your house. They'll focus specifically on, on you. You go to that, that website, getluna.com, and your insurance covers it. But other than that, Sirhad, we'll put you in the forum, post some videos, and let's see what we can figure out there. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. No and uh, one last thing, I don't know if we have any more uh, time, but how would you approach calorie increase in this situation? Yeah, right now, right now with what we're doing with correctional exercise, I would keep them at maintenance, maybe a slight surplus, but I wouldn't worry about body composition changes just yet. Let's focus on fixing the root cause of the pain because if we can't figure that out, you'll never be able to do uh, all the other stuff you want to do. So we got to really focus on that first. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank you on behalf of everyone who listens to Mind Pump because you guys are throwing some badass information uh, out there that nobody else is doing. Thank, thank you so much. That's really appreciate that's, you guys. That's true. I agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. Take care. Thanks, man. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Yeah, you know, uh, this really highlights a challenge that we all talked about when we created those programs. Well, this is, okay, this is why I asked him to go in the forum. And I I know in Prime Pro, I, I did this because I know that when I would teach, and I used to do like some of this stuff like in a class setting, mm -hmm. even with people, me sitting in front of them doing the movement. Yeah. They're, when they they do it and they think they're doing it the way on, they're, they're not they're mirroring you, but the intention isn't there. Totally yet. not there. Yeah. And so, so a lot of people they'll do these tests and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I passed zone one, two, and three. And I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here!" I know you did. I can just see the way you stand in your posture, yeah. and I can tell that there's no way. you And they're passed. being genuine. They're being sincere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I okay. I struggle with zone one. I still do not have a, a, a pass on zone one. And I have I have good shoulder mobility and can do Indian clubs and may swings and do a lot of things that we talk about on the show, but still can't pass that test because there's areas to yeah. improve there. So I think a lot of people think just because they can do it, they yeah. can go through the wall circle, but they don't realize they push their body four inches to the left when they yeah. do that. Like you're not, you're actually not performing. You have to be fail. in your body, yeah. which is a really hard thing to, to teach. Uh, it really comes intrinsically. Like you've figured that out through feeling your way through these things and you have to know how to do that. And so it does take quite a bit, bit of coaching and, and extra cues to, you know, to keep you on track. Here's a silly example. This is not, not related to him, but just a silly example. I would do, let's say a cable row with a client and the form from the outside looks pretty damn good. Even to a trainer looks pretty damn good. And then after the set, they'd say, I felt a little pressure in my lower back. And this is what I would do. I'd say, okay, let's do another set. We go to do another set and I'd say, okay, before you do a rep, brace your core like I'm going to poke you in your stomach. That's all they would do. Mm -hmm. Their form actually wouldn't even change. They would just brace their midsection as if someone was going to poke them. And all of a sudden, no pain or no pressure in the low back. Yeah. This is what we're talking about when we talk about intention. Now, I did mention, you know, getluna.com because sometimes you're just, you're not an expert. You're, this is not your, your field of expertise. The issues can be so subtle and you can literally be stuck in a situation where you're like, I'm doing, I think I'm doing everything. Why the hell do I yeah. still hurt? Stop guessing. And yes. In that case, you have a professional come to your house and they'll fix it for you. And then you're done. You don't have to worry about it ever again. You really figure it out after about, you know, five or 10 sessions and then the problem solved. Otherwise it could end up being one of those chronic issues where you're just like, oh, I guess I can never overhead press, or I guess mm -hmm. squats are just out of the question for me, which you don't want to be in that position. Our next caller is Rachel from Kansas. Hey, what's up, Rachel? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, I'm super excited to be talking to you. I'm a huge fan of the show. Um, so my question is, is I am a huge like nutrition and exercise enthusiast, but I always struggle to figure out what to do with myself. Um, I've been lifting weights consistently over the last eight years, and I built a ton of muscle, and I love that, but I'm at the point where I feel like either my body fat's too high or I have too much muscle for my frame. So my question is basically, how can I speed up my metabolism without getting any bigger muscularly, um, as well as just getting my calories into a better place? Okay, uh, good question. I also see here in your question that you wrote to us that you're in your last year of physical therapy school. I am. Oh, very cool. So you know what you're doing then uh, when it comes to movement. Okay, so where are your calories right now? How tall are you? What's your body weight? And do you know so your body my calories size? are at fifteen hundred on maintenance. Um, I'm five three and I'm one hundred and fifty pounds, and I usually vary in like between one hundred forty to one hundred fifty pounds. 
um, and my body fat is about 20 or 21 percent. Wow. Okay. So you are one of those very rare female individuals where you just hold on to muscle. Does that, is that? I do. Apply? Okay. <laughs> this is just they call me answer. a little bulldog in my class because I'm just that muscular. <laughs> yeah. Very, and that's very rare. It's actually a cool thing to, to, to have because you're always going to kind of be sculpted and toned. But you want to get smaller and you don't want to have to cut your calories. And I can I can understand this. In my entire career, I think I've worked with maybe a couple women. Yeah, there's uh, been one or two. In this situation. Here's what, and this is where I give advice that I never give it to anybody Car else. Cardio. Yeah, right? I would say. <laughs> yeah. Cardio comes. yeah, reduce, your, reduce your, your resistance training and do a little bit more endurance training and your body will pare down some of your muscle size. As far as boosting your metabolism without increasing muscle mass, it's really hard to do. Now, there is a range of calories that your current lean body mass will burn. On the low end, you know, there's a number, and on the high end, there's another number. What determines that is typically macronutrient profile will help, so high protein helps with that. But the other thing is, are you sending a muscle building signal, which it sounds like you are? So again, this is one of those rare instances where I would say, Reduce your resistance training, maybe even reduce the intensity of it. When you're going to the gym, you're just kind of going through the motions, going through full range of motion. Do a little bit more endurance work, and that may give you the look that you're looking for. But I will say this, and I'll caution you, okay? The, you've heard the term, the grass is always greener on the other side? Right. <laughs> okay. The women that I worked with, I can, I can think of two specifically who were very similar to you. They did this, and you know what happened? They stopped because they said, I don't like this. I like doing what I did before. And, and it felt better. It felt better to have yeah. a little more muscle and I felt more solid and I liked the way my butt looked and all that other stuff. So give it a shot. But I, my money is on that. You'll probably do it and be like, nah, I liked where I was before. Yeah, you're yeah, that's what that's what I've always struggled with, just because I love to be strong and I love having muscles. But it's just like I just have a lot. <laughs> So. Oh, damn you. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, yeah, that, literally, uh, yeah, your stat, my ex was a little bit taller than what you are at 5'3", but your body fat percentage and total, she was like 158 uh, and two inches taller than you. Uh, and she walked around like this. And I remember when we got her ready for her first show and she actually had a, a different, she hired a coach outside of me uh, to help her. And I remember... How he he had to completely and the, one of the the feedbacks from the first judging she had was her her quads were too developed for women's bikini, and we had to like completely eliminate leg training. All uh, she had to do tons of cardio. Her calories were so it blew my mind, and I swear that like it was so hard for her to even lose a pound or two of muscle. It was just so crazy to see and. I've only met a handful of, of women that have genetics like this. And I a hundred percent agree with Sal, like, you know, to get down there, I remember it was great. Cause so she could say she did it and she got on stage and she won, she did great. Uh, but I remember her not being happy. I remember her being like, I prefer the muscle. I prefer a, yeah. a fuller body and, and looking that way and being strong and, and not feeling all like I have to do cardio three, four times a week. But yeah, you are an example of uh, the advice we give to you would be the opposite of what we give to most people. You're somebody who I would say, you know, start, you know, I would encourage circuit type training, low yeah. rest periods and, you know, add cardio to it because in your case, it, your body probably just hangs on to that, that, that muscle mass. Okay. Um, and just to be clear, so you guys did say like, so I do bump up my calories or try to get them higher or just 1500 is fine. Fifth, okay. So you can, okay. There's two issues here that we're looking at. One mm -hmm. is, do you want to eat more calories? Because 1500 feels too low to you. Does it give you less flexibility when you want to hang out with friends? Yeah. Or? It's mostly just the flexibility. Like I can stick to it and it's fine in my day-to-day -day life, but it, I run into issues whenever like, you know, just special events and things like that. And I mean, granted, that's not going to make or break anything, but yeah. So you can slowly bump your calories. But here's my guess. With rare individuals like you that hang on to muscle, it'll make it even harder for you to lose muscle. I, I would, I, I bet this, let me ask you a question. When you increase your calories, you just build muscle and get stronger? Yeah, I get <laughs> real strong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody listening and watching to this right now <laughs> is all like, rolling their yeah, eyes. everybody's like, wow. Everybody, everybody hates Rachel. I feel it's so right. bad for you right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, okay, so here, this is, I know you didn't ask for this, uh, but I'm going to go in this, in this direction because this is so common for most people. There's a certain amount of acceptance that we have to have with how our bodies are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people's bone structure isn't perfect. I mean, I had narrow, I have naturally narrow shoulders. 
I had to accept that. Some people have. He has a weird face. Short, too. yeah, <laughs> weird face. Just Adam said, have a weird face. <laughs> it's kind of beak like. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Justin, for giving the details. No, no uh, some people have. Some people have short muscle bellies. Other people have long muscle bellies. Things that you can't really change. You know, acceptance is going to go a long way here. And you're you're young. I mean, you're you're in physical therapy school, so you're probably in your twenties. You know, I tell you what. Um, I, in 10 years, 15 years, you're going to love your genetics. You're going to love the fact that you hold on to muscle. Yeah. It's going to mm -hmm. keep you lean. You're going to you're going to bounce back from having a baby if you ever decide to have a baby at one point way faster than other people. You probably pick up athletics very easily. So at one point, you're going to love this. I know right now it's challenging because it's like you want to do a particular thing and your body doesn't want to do it. But there's a certain level of acceptance here that I, I think, you know, would be a good idea to focus on because what you don't want to do is this. What you don't want to do is get so caught up on the fact that you want to be smaller that you damage yourself. You know, the example that Adam gave with his ex-girlfriend, I mean, had she continued doing that because she liked the look, she would have probably caused well, she did. hormone she lost, issues. She lost her period. Yeah, see? That's why we that was like why we never did that again after that was cuz she lost her period for w months after that. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I guess I you know, I'm sorry for the maybe not telling you exactly. I I the mean, advice I you want to hear, but I mean, I I'm going to tell you right now from the outside, uh these are great genetics to have. They're going to really serve yeah, you well work, as work you, with your gifts. Yeah, totally. You could you could play with some things like this. So I can give you some other things that, you know, you could you could try and do. Like I might drop you down to just one day of like a maps anabolic a week and then I'd get you doing things like like mobility stuff and maybe we would pick up some you know, things where we're, we're challenging your endurance and doing yoga. Stuff. Yeah. Do some yoga, do, uh, do some things, some practices like that, that might be kind of a, away from now again, to Sal's point, you may not like all that and you may love lifting the weights cause you're strong. Cause I know, I mean, I tell you what, I know that that's what my ex, she loved to lift cause it feels good when you're a strong and powered woman and you're, you're lifting as much as just about anybody else inside the gym. It's a cool ass feeling. So you know, you could play with those things and see how you like it and see how you feel and see how your body shapes up and if if you're happy with that. But you're you're in it. You're in a, a good. You have a good problem. Let's put yeah. it that way. Do you? That's do you, awesome. Well, yeah. do you like? I mean, yeah. So I appreciate you guys, and um, that's awesome advice. And I I just wanted to get basically your guys' expert opinion on what's going on here because yeah. I'm, you know. Run my brain on it for a while and I just couldn't figure it out. So yeah, you got, yeah. You, you just got really good muscle building genes. You know, Rachel, I tell you what, if you're, if you like the competitive aspect of exercise, you might be able to focus on that. We have a program that we wrote for obstacle yeah, course I was racers. Just thinking OCR. Mm -hmm. And, but it's, it's a, it's, you're going to build a lot of stamina yeah. and endurance. It's drastically different. It's competitive. Doing. And for someone like you, it might give you a little bit more of the look you're looking for because it's not focused so much on building as it is on, performing well and maybe an obstacle course race not that you need to do a race but rather train that way so why don't we send you that program take a look at it if it looks like something that might be interesting give it a shot and and see if it gives you a little bit more uh, of what you're looking for awesome well thank you guys so much i super appreciate you guys meeting with me like i said i've been a huge fan of the show so it's an honor to get to talk to you guys <laughs> thank you rachel awesome rachel right. thank you all right thank you guys thank you yeah, one big thing I took away from that was that you guys think I have a weird face. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I never knew. I was just piling I, on. I was dude. just trying to make Rachel yeah. feel better. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what? So you want to know what's funny? So I had a client I trained. I literally remember two women that were like this because that's how rare it is of all the women that I trained in my entire career, either directly or by proxy through other trainers and in the gym. And there was one woman, no joke, no joke, she stopped lifting weights and only did – you know, athletic based stuff. And, and she looked like she looked more muscular than women would look if they did bodybuilding for years. That's kind of genetics that she this had. This was Monique, dude. Yeah. It, yeah. it blew my Crazy. mind when I saw, I mean, I, I want to say too, this was, so this was way long time ago now. Uh, I remember the diet that um, her coach had her on and it was because they just, they could not get her to lose. Like she like had to, he's like, I'm not, she's not allowed to do any leg exercises for the the next three months. Mm -hmm. It was cardio crazy, super low calorie. And I remember coming home every day, just like so angry. That, like she could just cut that hard and not like lose any muscle mass whatsoever. She's built just like this. I mean, she was taller than she was, but she also carried 10 more pounds on her body. And it was, that was like, and they're rare. It's like, she was the only woman that I had known that well 
that had this uh, had genetics like that. Yeah, you hit it real too though. Like this is when you turn. 35 40 oh she's 45. gonna be she's gonna love it yeah she's just gonna her, everyone's yeah. gonna be like what do you do i don't really do much I just yeah have all exactly this, this curve i love shape. the idea too you when you said ocr it was i was literally that's what i was meaning by like hey maybe this is a cool fun time for you to explore some totally. other modalities and you know it, ocr would be great for someone like this because she would she would just get leaner and she would look still muscular and awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that grass is greener on the other side, man. That is yeah. a real lesson. Like, you know, there's so many people out there that hate, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll give you a simple example. Like, uh, you know, I have family members that women who hate the fact that they have really curly, thick Mediterranean hair. Oh, when I wake up in the morning, it's so bushy and I got to do this and I got to do that. And then my wife has got this ultra straight, sleek hair. And everybody's like, I wish I had your hair. And my wife's like, I wish I had your hair. I hate the fact that I can. And it's like, you know, it's it's you you oftentimes want what you don't have. And if you get stuck in that, it's, yeah. you'll, you'll never be happy. Well, you never win because then even when you achieve that, you, then you want the other side. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you build muscle, burn body fat, improve your performance. We even have guides for pain and guides for coaches and trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.